How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Sunday. Let's talk about Warhammer the Old World show. Boons is here. Um, we have a few things to discuss. I uh, woke up and I'm like, oh, I got nothing planned for today. What am I gonna do? And then I got emails and like I got a lot to talk about now. <laughs> so, Spoons, how was Adepticon? Um, it was great. I had a blast. One thing I will say: Your be conscious when signing up for through. demos, because well, I don't know if I just got a bad look at the draw. Signed up for four demos, and all of them were bad. Well, spoons, I can very faintly hear you in the very, very distant distance. That was English. Yeah, let me, let me uh, check my settings. Second mind. You were working fine a moment ago. Okay. We just argue about drilled for three hours. See, Kyle. <laughs> so last night I uh, I recorded a couple of battle reports yesterday, um, and my tent was go straight home and write out that FAQ, and maybe we'll talk about it today and go over make sure like you know everybody understands everything. I have to make a video explaining my FAQ, and the only one, uh, actually one of the two things I'm confident on is the drilled answer. Everything else is just, I, I don't know if it's, um, you know what, objectively, you guys, answer this question, you're going to be able to answer this better than me. Has the games, have, have, has this version of Warmer, is this version of Warmer Fantasy more complex and convoluted and, and more of a needed FAQ than every previous edition? Or am I just so deep, um, literally running my living off of it? Um, oh my laces weren't out. Uh, am I just so deep that I can't? Uh, I, I can't see that it's the same as it's always been. Yeah, Dale, what happened? <laughs> I started writing Dale, and so in my FAQ, I'm trying to quote page numbers, and there are rules that I've hundred percent read, and I can't find the pages for. Like I just I just need to take a break. Uh I'm I, I am going to finish that writing today. Uh, accountability guys. I'm gonna post it in the Discord and in the videos today. It's gonna get done today. Right, can um, you hear me better now. Wait, I can think. One second. Talk again, Spoons. Can you hear me better now? Wait a second. Talk again. I'm talking again. Okay, hold on. It's my it's my headphones. Okay. <laughs> oh, second, buddy. It's not you. It's me. That sounds right. Oh, wait. I hear you now. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the Posh Golf member, 26 months of Peak Supporter, back from the weekend of the Old World Gaming and my debut with Vampires. One win, two losses, but fun regardless. That's the most important part. Adept Kim was awesome. I streamed so much MCP and Shatterpump, but I got a game Old World last week. Loving the edition. I love this edition, Ice Dan. I love this edition. Oh, Ice Dan. YouTuber, right? We've met. So there's, there's a lot. Hey, Sorbo, there's going, buddy. There's a lot of names over the years. I'm pretty sure I know you, right, Ice Dan? <laughs> yep. So how was your experience, uh, Depticon Spoons? I, like I said, I enjoyed it. Um, the demos were hit and miss but you know you're 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 playing the random element of there's 15 other people at this demo so one of them is going to be a dud <laughs> <laughs> but i think that gw is in desperate need of restocks all around because yes. hands down their booth was the most disappointing of all of them did nothing and they didn't have any old world books none wow wow that sucks the only new, the only recent releases they had across the board were their two commemorative models for Adepticon. Everything else was stuff that had been out already for a while. Yeah, I saw Matthew brought back some some of the the the, the Rook or whatever it's called, the Age of Sigma yeah. model. But hey, they put they put a Combat Patrol in the swag bag, so you got to give them a little bit of credit. Hey, they are not bad. I've never got a swag bag. I never, I never actually, I never actually register and check Adepticon. I just go. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it was worth it for me. I'll do it again next year because I was able to flip the stuff I didn't wanted to cover my cost of entry, including the. Oh, the oh, bags. nice. 
my um well i had a conversation with matt afterwards and like i i, I knew i knew i knew but matthew really drove it home for me it's a mistake for me to have not gone and i gotta make sure i go to all these events and now that the old world is going to be a big thing at these events it's probably a good idea that i go to all of them yeah because like the well the first email i opened up this like one hour ago before i was like i want to send all this up was um i'm gonna assume i want to i want to i'm not going to show the email but i will read a bunch of it off um somebody deeply involved with running the old world event at at uh, adepticon because there's some questions like some like rules that they had to like rule i guess on the fly and they're pointing them out to me and we're gonna talk about them in a bit and then it was like the uh a link to best coast pairing showing like all the um uh winners and stuff how things are doing but then i realized like i i don't think i know a whole lot about um uh the way the tournament stuff work, well best coast parents in particular works so it's time to get my ass to these events understand these things and uh that might be a big part of the future for this channel and the old world now i know i know the um old world audience uh is split in, in a good for good reason not everybody likes competitive stuff but if i'm gonna focus on one game I want to focus on all yeah, the aspects yeah, of it. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of all of it. Yeah, I think you probably missed out, if nothing else, on the networking opportunities there, because I, I saw so many Warhammer and mini related content creators there lately. That's exactly that's exactly the thing. Well, the thing is, every time I've gone to Adepticon, like here, guys, here's some here's some YouTuber problems for you right now. Um, every time I've gone to Adepticon, I've had to leave, go over to Walmart, buy a bag. Or three to ship back everything that I get. People just give and give and give. So like I just don't like this sounds so bad. I just don't want to deal with that. <laughs> so what I did is <laughs> I have one of the max size Feldar bags and I have you know, the box and the foam and all that. I took the box and foam out, took the bag, and I'm like, this is what I'm allowed to take home. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever I can fit in here. I'm gonna make sure like uh, next to the Depticon is I'm gonna tell everybody like, like I appreciate you wanting me to take your product, but I just can't do it. <laughs> I, I felt like well the thing is like a game i got into because of exactly that was um dark age so this is like five years ago at Depticon, uh i was given you know being steve from any war game i was given like a two-player starter set I'm like yeah. i'll paint it and do a battery report because they gave me it feels like a nice thing there's the right thing to do and i absolutely fell in love with the game it was freaking amazing then they went and canceled it but i love that game so i got that from adepticon So did you get to play? Oh, and, and and more importantly, I didn't get to hang out with you, Spoons, or all the other people that went there. That's actually a, a pretty big deal for me. I, I I stopped by the rabbit store. I said hi to Dave, Matt. Uh, I didn't get a chance to say hi to Josh, but they were apparently really really busy and really. They were busy, them. and let me tell you, they got a lot of my money. I think I bought all but one of the big box sets. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. And that was because I didn't buy the last one because I bought into Malifo. So I'm like, I got got a budget somehow. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I understand like the whole I think the um I think the plan going forward is to like be at all these things and that'll start to budget for it. But um uh Troll Horde Battle Report, it's gonna be up tomorrow. I have booked tomorrow. Uh I don't know if we'll go so the next big events in the UK, I don't think I'll be crossing over. I would just do North America. Yeah. I wanna fly as little as possible. Um, I'm large. You could do like the the Warhammer World events, you know, the, the the big iconic ones. But I wouldn't fuss about anything that yeah, you have to fly for. Yeah, like flying the, the 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 flight to England was eight hours, six or eight hours. I can't remember now, but either way, it was just hours of pain. I don't fit in chairs. Uh, the flight, the flying there. Um, I no, plane uh, chairs don't fit people. Let's get yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I, I'm six four. I'm three hundred fifty pounds. When I was, I sat in the aisle seat. Sorry, I sat in the um, the uh, emergency, like the, the the door exit seat. I have I have enough leg room to lay down the floor in front of me, but I didn't have any headroom, so I was like this the whole time because the the the, the bulkhead curved around my head. I had to like slouch down. I couldn't slip straight. Anyways, these are not working for the more UK trip. Starbolt or idiot. I'm not even kidding. When I know like, it's, I've had five operations on my spine. I broke my back when I was 21 years old. Um, it causes an immense amount of pain to sit down for that long so i'm standing up constantly i'm looming over people it's just it's just i, I don't travel well <laughs> uh 
Okay, so which I don't know if I should go over. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna go over this first because I don't understand it. So I'm gonna get some help from you guys. If you just look at the screen, uh, I think this is the um. What's this confusion then? Oh, okay, Catbot, we're getting to it. We're getting, we're getting to it. I'll, I'll, get to, I'll jump to that next. It's not confusion. It's more about more things that will have to end up in an FAQ. I found your channel a few days ago. I wanted to start with Warhammer the Old World. I want Chaos Stores as my first, but I can't figure out where to start. Ooh, Chaos Stores might not be the easiest place to start unless you can find the models. But anything that a uh, Warriors of Chaos is a good place to start, the Seraphon's a good place to start. Uh, Soul Blade's a great, or sorry, Vampire Count's a great place to start because you can buy the models. Yeah, maybe you get everything for them. Yeah. Ogres are the same way. Or, or mostly the same. Yeah, Storm Bolter, I guess I know you would get it. <laughs> so, um, if you just look at the screen real quick, uh, this is, now, first of all, I want to point out that people keep uh, emailing me um, tournament, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Placings? And be like, hey, you said X was a really powerful army. Look at their place last. Like, it was a 10-person tournament. And, like, the data is not that meaningful right now. And even the data I have in front of me is not that meaningful right now. Uh, but I am happy to see the Hiles took number one. With a score of 20, 20, 20. I don't know what that means, everybody. Can anybody explain to me? Uh, so it's, this is going to be like mostly uh, Steve has to learn how to understand this, this kind of stuff. Because it's different from when I was going to tournaments. This is not what things looked like. Are you a tournament guy, Spoons? No, but I'm I'm trying to think. Maybe that's showing all three. Maybe there's a three-round tournament that's showing like they scored max points all three. That makes sense to me. This is three wins, battle points, 60, wins, SOS. I don't know what that means. Battle points, SOS, wins extended, SOS, battle points extended. Well, battle points are probably <laughs> tiebreakers for each round. That's probably what it is. Kyle, thank you, buddy. 20 points for Crusher 50, 50 points for standard. I love it. Yeah, Stormbolt, the problem for better seats, you go, the, the price for a ticket was 1000 bucks to $4,000. It's like four times the price. Yeah, I um uh, I just Kyle, I just opened up the uh email and didn't I could have had Blue come on, but I don't want to like ask him last minute to jump on and learn me some stuff. I literally just got this email or just opened it. Izzy the Warbash remember for 19 months. Hi Steve, I'm super excited for orcs and goblins battalion. Yes. I don't need any more orcs, but I probably have to buy some of those. Let's get some more goblins. I'm thinking of buying it for my birthday. Well, happy upcoming birthday. Strength of schedule. That's what strength is. Basically, if you play a good opponent that plays tie, you win your strength of schedule. Sorry, and win your strength of schedule gets better. It's used for tiebreakers. Thank you very yeah, much, son. Beautiful. Just five four. Don't worry about seating. I wish I was five four. Oh, look at, look at this though. Blue Ford. That's blue. Square hammer. Play second and good for him. Wait, what happens? I clicked on that. Oh, was it? Oh, it's just, okay. I see. So he uh, looks like he had three wins. Uh, looks like all three crushing victories. He pl he played Warriors of Chaos. Beautiful. I see a couple of orcs and goblins right here up top. Oh yeah, Tomb Kings undefeated. Oh yeah, same of his army, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then my favorite part was seeing uh, Threat Level Midnight. Yeah, so this is one of the things I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to learn all this um tournament stuff i don't know if i should i need to play in the tournaments i know this but i don't know if i should play in them right away um and get a better handling a better better handle on uh the tournament community nowadays because my experience with um warhammer is now very very unique obviously um my experience with the community is different uh i gotta, I gotta see how things change like like i don't even know actually you know what what kind of comp was there even a comp? What kind of comp was in this uh, Depticon? Does anybody know? I didn't check it out, but I assume there wasn't one. I didn't even think of one. I didn't even think of it until right now. All right, so I'm going to read this email I got. Let me pull it over to another screen. Why can't I move it? Terms are a ton of fun. Only comparable was rule of three, I believe. Well, how do orcs and goblins handle the rule of three? Everything 
Like everything they have is called an orc mob. The doubles event had more comp. Oh, you know what? His best coach it was, is the thing I was looking at. Was that a doubles event? Ah, maybe not. I have to do research, and it's not a thing that I'm overly excited to be doing right now. I have painting to do. Okay, so, uh, first of all, very nice, kind words at the beginning of this email. Uh, the initially capped out at 70 players, but ended up with 62 players after several last minute drops. Attached is, uh, this is where I saw the best coast pairing stuff I just showed you guys. He just sent me a link here. But I'll, I'll jump over to the rules question. And uh, Ben, I hope you're okay with me reading your email. But I got to assume that that's your intent by sending me this email. There are three rule questions that hung around the event. I thought we could use clarification. I don't recall you've covered yet and curious on your thoughts post event provided uh, on our on the spot rules below. <clears throat> so that right there made me led me to believe this is the person that run or at least was in uh, one of the judges. And no means believe our interpretation are 100% correct as we could easily have missed something in the moment on top of sleep deprivation. <laughs> yeah, fair. Lastly, I wanted to include a question that didn't come up during the event at all. Uh, what are personal games? Okay, so number one, first question. <clears throat> Can a gyrocopter dive bomb a lone enemy character, even if they're within three inches of one or more friendly units? Uh, they they ruled that yes, you can, because it's not a shooting attack or a spell. Um, without even going into a rule book, I would have ruled um, no. Because it still targets them, right? You can't target the character. Is it Lookout, sir? Is that the rule I'm looking for? It's not Lookout, sir. Oh, okay. A lone character cannot be targeted by enemy shooting or enemy spells while it's on three of a friendly unit. Interesting. So I guess rules as written. Um, you can. I'm going to add this to my gyro copter slash bomber. Um, this is this is this is the thing that start is causing me um stress. I do not want the responsibility of making this call. Um I would have I would have said no. I think while it's clear it says lone character can't be targeted by enemies shooting um while within three of an enemy unit, we can look at things like um well I'm about to make arguments for intent, but uh, I think they're gonna make sense and anybody by all means nobody has to agree with me. Call me out if you think I have a uh, bad logic here. So when once the Breath attack, the breath weapon of a dragon, or every all breath weapons, uh, which are clearly not shooting attacks. So rules as written in the rule book, you can march and then do them. The FAQ said no, they are shooting attacks. Uh, feels like the bomb is kind of the same thing. So I would have ruled no. Uh, the same thing applies. You can't target the um, character with it. I does that make sense? Anybody disagree with that? I mean, if they ruled that the other one was a shooting attack, then it checks out for me. Yeah, they ruled the breath weapon is a shooting attack. So why would the bomb not be? I mean, I know it's not the same thing, but it's the same thing. Yeah. FU covers that somewhat. They state the intent was to play uh, hide slash safe, keep your characters against all things if the template lands directly on them. Yeah, exactly, Sudden. That's exactly how, yeah, exactly how my interpretation as well. Gyrocopters can target lone characters providing they are necker monsters because I made that the fuck up. Yeah, that's also a fair interpretation, Kyle. I will put that in the FAQ. You always have the option of making the up a rule. <laughs> Just rechecked our event package and the only comp was rule of three. In the doubles, only six wizard levels per side and three inner max spent on a single model. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I kind of like that for doubles. 
Does it count as shooting get Gremmel? No. No, but like using the letter of the rule, the letter of the law here, no. But the spirit, the answer is definitely yes. But I have no I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna make sure I'm really clear about this. I have no authority or right to really argue intent. I did not write the rule. <laughs> That's how I feel about that. Should it be the same for hex rays and lamp rays. Yes, I yes, Mr. Fancy Pants. Um, in fact, you know what? Um I'm gonna put that on here as well. Uh so Mr. Fancy Pants is talking about flyover attacks. Uh the lamp rays for demons, for example. Um, they can fly over a unit and they roll like a D D three strength four hits for every ball flying over them. Um uh, I would say the character would also be safe from those. Nothing. Targets. But you know, does anybody disagree with that one? The hex wraith and the lamprey, not the lamprey, but the hex wraith and the screamer flying over single model. Like rules as written, clear as day they can. It just can't be the intent. So they can target you, but can they look out, sir? I don't think look out, sir, works that way this edition. Yeah, so Lucosur only works against shooting attacks. And when they're in a unit. So Lucosur, if you, you want to argue the shooting attack part, we can leave that part out of the discussion. But they're not in the unit, so no, it definitely doesn't work. You're safe with intent here. They've showed their intent with the FAQ. Yeah, Ben, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I'm looking to create an FAQ I can use for my channel that solves problems and hopefully makes things as easy for everybody and every every time i make a ruling somebody's getting pissed off and i'm i'm starting to not care <laughs> i wouldn't care about that oh, that's that's always gonna look how often have you had to judge tournaments if, if at all never Never. There's but, two people in any decision, and one of them's gonna hate you for your answer. So that's the thing. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna. Be fair. I wasn't gonna. I wasn't going to um, um, bring that part up. But I'm just gonna say, like, this is also because Sky and I are gonna work together on having a GT over at uh, the bunker, the Mini Wargaming bunker, right? So that's cool. We we gotta know what we're doing. We have to make these rulings beforehand. We gotta put. We gotta post our FAQ beforehand. And like the way I plan on handling handling rulings, and even though I have to probably go to a bunch of tournaments to figure out how people are going to do this Well, no, <laughs> no, what I'm actually going to do is, uh, by the time you call a judge over for a ruling, when the judge... Tell me if this is bad. Okay, tell me if this is bad. When, if I get called... If I'm a judge, I get called over the table, I may know the answer to their ruling, but I'm going to require them to bring their explanation to the table. If somebody's saying, no, you can't do it, or no, you, the person's trying to do something they can't do, you got to show me why in the book they can't, and the other guy's got to show me why they can I'm not going to use what I've predetermined is the correct answer. I'm like, I want your argument. And I'm going to go by what you like. If you're saying you can't do that, you got to show your opponent why. And then if, if you can't agree, you can call the judge over. You got to show the judge why. Does that does that make sense? Or am I am I, am I, am I thinking am I doing it backwards? So I I feel that's going to slow things down a bit. What I would do is I'd put in the announcements leading up to this, like you know, day of the tournament. Hey, here's how we do things. Like put you know, whatever rule packet you send them in advance, anything like that. It it puts in the steps. If there's disagreement before a judge is called, you have to show each other the page numbers. You know, like yeah, they've already done. So you walk up under the assumption they've already done that. Yeah, so because uh, well, that way, if they have a gripe about, it, they find a page number later. Well, you were supposed to have done it already. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, that, that, that's the way I was trying to. That's my whole thought process was like. You were supposed to have like this thing with each other. You guys are reasonable to figure it out, and then, um, yeah, yeah, I guess. But yeah, you know so what? when you come over, you should just be making your pure your de- judgment. You shouldn't be the only case you should be hearing is what's going on. You know, like what exactly the issue is. Not I, well, this white dwarf says this kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I I think for my event, um, I shouldn't play and I shouldn't judge. Is how I'm thinking I'm gonna handle it. In fact, maybe we'll do a little bit of a fundraiser and get uh Flambo Hero <laughs> to come on over and make him head judge. 
Steve, you just like 10 years. Maybe you're not being yelled at. No, that's true. No, it's very true. But um, often cap on, if you've been watching me for 10 years, you know this. Often, there's there's three there's three modes of me, right? There's there's sarcastic joking around. There's me arrogantly trying to provoke. Um, and then if I'm doing either of those, yeah, come at, come at me, because that's what they're there for. But when I'm trying to be helpful and I'm pissing you off, I'm getting pissed off with that. So I'm like, nah, I don't care about that anymore. <laughs> So, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But you know what? I still freaking love this, and I love you guys. Um, regarding hex race, how do you interpret the last sentence? Let me check that real quick, and then I'll get back to this email. I have this feeling this is going to be a non-issue. You're probably right. Why is every document a different size in this chat? Oh, hex rays. I want to do a whole new vampire count army. I'm rebasing the vampire counts right now. And I just love the soul bit model so much. I'm hyped to see what new sculpts come out for Age of Sigmar 4th edition. Because right? it sounds like they're giving it the 40k treatment where every book, hey, here's like four new kits. Or four reworked kids you know some combination thereof i don't i'm not fault okay wait. if hex rays run over a lone model does it take eight hits or do you actually look at how many oh no Kyle, I, I would say you look at how many physical models they, they every model has to like make a path and then land somewhere i'm only ever upset when i win a game how do you resolve that <laughs> some people are like that damn something you can do <laughs> it's called i concede yeah it's true <laughs> Right, because you're going to calculate score, you just go, I can see. Yeah, so the, the first question, uh, Heralds of the Emperor, or, yeah, Heralds, yeah, oh, sorry, Ben, was, yeah, I would have ruled it the opposite way you did. But nobody can say your ruling was actually incorrect, because I think yours was definitely rules as written. Uh, which means, I, I've talked about this before, I'm going to keep pointing it out, my whole life I've been a rules as written character. I turned 40, and now I'm rules as intended. What a hip young Steve would call me a hypocrite. Old Steve, Steve would try Steve to fight young Steve, but old Steve wouldn't last very long. <laughs> okay, so what happens? I didn't fully follow this one, so I figured I'd read it online. What happens if two single chariot Oh my god? Remind me, Spoons, if I forget this, I was I was doing a battle report with Mitch on Friday and something came up that I legitimately did not know how to handle. We have to talk about it. Right. Um Okay, so what happens if two single chariot slash monsters charge on either side of the enemy, but still maximum charge of an enemy unit, but still maximize frontage? Okay, so we have, let's say, an orc boar chariot fighting a unit of skeleton archers, and there's one on each flank. That's where we're at. One unit with higher initiative inflicts... Oh, okay, never mind. It can't be two boar chariots. It's two different initiatives. I gotta stop. A giant and a chariot. A giant and a chariot, yeah. One unit with higher initiative inflicts enough wounds onto the unit where the opponent will remove enough models from the front from the front that one model would no longer be engaged in combat. I'd read that again slowly. One unit... Okay, so let's say you're barely... You're, t you're touching their back two ranks from the side. Mm -hmm. You kill ten models. Now you're not touching anyone. That's, the, that, that's where we're at right now. Got it. Oh, um... There's an answer for that in the, in the core rulebook. Okay, let's keep reading to make sure that's what we're talking about. Uh, question, could the model be disengaged, be being stuck in place without the ability to reform, acting as normal? No, okay, I know. There's a there's a part of the rulebook that you missed, and it's easy to miss because, my God, this thing is, yeah. It is <laughs> dense. I, so I was able to pick one up, fortunately, at a discount. The core book, I'm like, I see why they charge 90 for this because this is three codexes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to find the answer, but there is the there, there the answer is in this book. Um, it's gonna be I think in under, under the oddball section of close combat. Basically, the answer is you move the model back into base contact. You just keep you tight you, you crunch them up, crunch them up, crunch them up. It's and it that is in the rule book. 
I want to start using flammable heroes thing instead, but I figure it'll take me even longer to learn where everything is. I'm not gonna find the special rule section. Combat trade one right here. Charges. Who? I can, for some reason, I have my headphones on. I can hear my 3D printers so loud with my headphones. Can you, you guys can't hear them at all, right? No, nah, I'm not hearing them. When I have the headphones on, it's in my ear from the printer going I'm bananas. And stuff like that normally doesn't bother me at all. Um, But I think it's right here. It's not right there. It's not there either. Oh, thank you, Asher. What page one fifty eight? Shrinking units. That sounds about right. Yeah, there you go. I'm gonna I'll reply to this email because I'm not gonna assume that Ben is watching this video. But yeah, um, so yeah, no, uh, in the core rule book under oddball stuff, page one fifty eight, drinking is you just keep mashing them back together. What was the third one? If a doom wheel is locked in combat, can it still shoot slash a zap up to three small blast templates within six inches of the model? We ruled that it could because it's not a shooting attack. It happens at the end of the shooting phase. I'm not exactly sure what the question about this is. Because I'm pretty sure the answer is yes without looking at it. Doom wheel. At the end of every shooting phase, after all shooting has been resolved, place up to three. Yeah, you can. Yep, oh good. Yeah, you ruled it. Yeah, so only one that... Um, the only one that I would I would rule differently, even though I think you ruled correctly was the the gyro bomber tar targeting a character i think the faq in a kind of explains the spirit as the answer is meant to be no uh and then shrinking units easy to miss page 158 problem solved if that was the, all the problems you had at an event that's awesome <laughs> uh then extra two units are locked in combat one unit must take a break test from taking 24 percent casualties in out of combat shooting Cannon ball balancing and spell stone thrower scouting over them. Assuming they still need to take a break test, if they fail, can the unit engaged with them try to pursue? Wait a minute. This is now you're about to you're about to experience my previous addiction biases. I never in a million years would have thought that you would take a panic check when you're engaged in combat. Now I know back in fifth edition you did. But every edition after that, you no longer took panic checks while you were engaged in combat. Kyle, is that is that is that written in the rule book somewhere? I assumed it was. I think it's after combat, right? Psychology. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah, so page 160. Uh, you don't make panic in combat. Okay, I'm going to reply. Let me just reply to an email real quick, everybody.
first question to um page 158 and One Nico, how's it going, brother? What page was it again? Wait a minute. Oh, I'm hitting numbers when I'm I'm moving scenes around. I knew that was gonna happen. Excellent. Um There, send it off. Thanks, Cage. <laughs> uh, Sasha, I swear, you know, okay? <laughs> I do appreciate you. Nico, how those nobblers come, brother? Oh, Nico. Have you have you picked a color for the nobbler skin? I'm painting um uh the ogre butcher with the cauldron and there's three nobblers on the base with him i want us to match the same color you're painting my nobblers okay so no offense meant by this but you're not the right person to make an faq uh full of rule clarifications you're a professional mini gaming youtuber but you're a casual gamer not a competitive one it's the wrong mindset uh that's actually um not true uh you you don't like i'm gonna i gotta be I gotta be not. I'm not trying to be harsh, but Kurt, you don't know. Rules are rules, man. Yeah. Like he, we're not talking to Radis here. We're not talking. Yeah. Like, so no, like, changes. but he, uh, Ben doesn't know my uh, past at all. Um, okay. he's assuming. Um, I work at the rules all day, every day, and I have to put together an FAQ because I'm playing constantly, and I'm I get questions daily about the rules and how I'm handling them. So no, I I have I, I actually I have no I don't want to do this. I have to do this. And um, <laughs> I, I, I'm lucky enough to play people from literally all over the world, uh, constant regular tournament goers. Uh, I would say on average, I, I, I do better at rules than the, most of them. Not the top tier ones, but not every tournament player is the same uh, rule understanding. So ju just, just because you're a tournament player doesn't mean you have a good understanding of the rules. I say that with uh, <laughs> a lifetime, not sorry, well, a, a decade of career experience. I want to do gray, but I have a choice. Yeah, you do whatever you want, Nico. I don't care. I was going to let me know what you do, and I'll just copy it. Um, okay, so here's here's one that came up, and to this day, I still got people um, um, emailing that we're doing skirmish wrong. Uh, a lot of a lot of you, I'm gonna, a lot of you are misinterpreting skirmish rules by ignoring other rules in the in the book. So when you read the skirmish rules, you have to like apply all of the rules in the book with the skirmish, um, but Skirmishers have no facing. Man, this is this gets hard to. I need I need a table and models to show off the Steve being very polite here. Ah, I'm not trying to be rude, but it's I don't know how to I don't know how to ex express these things, and I don't believe. Well, who said it? I don't. What was his name? I don't believe Benjamin is meaning to be rude, or I don't think we said it's rude or anything at all. But like, I don't think he was being. No, rude. like no, it's like uh, we all have. Yeah. No, it's a perfectly valid um, opinion, and it's good for me to hear these kind of opinions too, because I, I gotta put my place right down then too, right? Um, what was I saying? Okay, so the skirmish stuff is is complicated. Most people are are misunderstanding it, and to be absolutely fair, there are still parts of it that I could be getting incorrect. Though I think I I pretty much got it down. However, there was an interesting problem I had. 
Mitch had a very large line of skirmishers. Not because he was gaming anything or doing light hammer. It was just a, uh, he tried to, he tried to actually with screamers. He tried a big unit of screamers. There was nine of them. So that means when they were in a skirmish formation, they were like, I don't know, they were, they were probably like 14 to 16 inches wide. Uh, <laughs> pal, behave. Um, I, I charged it. I charged the unit with two of my units. Now, let's say, let's say they're the, the, the screamers were this wide. They're all facing screen down, all, you know, in a line like that. I had a unit of infantry charge this side, and a, a, a chariot literally charge the other side. So, it's funny because this is the first time in all my games that I've had two units charge unit skirmishers because skirmishers have their, their front facing is every which way. So, they, after you hit the, after you align your unit to maximize your models on the closest model of the skirmishers, uh, the rest would line up to them. So in the past, oh, no, actually I have had multiple units uh, engage them. But in the past, I've had, once the first unit goes in, the skirmishers all line up to that unit and then the other unit, other unit charges in. But the problem is, under charging, uh, charging the same unit is simultaneous. Um, I guess you would need to align to the one that charged first, since that's where your opportunity to respond would have been. No, that's not that's not a thing anymore because you declare all your charges, and then and they then do you all, their, all your responses, all your responses and they move simultaneously. So I did yeah, not. I literally did not know how to handle it. So uh, because that, and I try to rule these things against my favor, so I had a unit of infantry and a chariot. So initially, I would have them all move to my my. Um, uh, infantry first but he parked in front of my chariot like an inch away so i wouldn't get impact attacks but if i had if i had done it that way they would he, they would have got pulled away from my chariot and thus gained impact attacks like well that can't that clearly can't be the the case right or the intent so i just had my units go in and touch both and had them split his units so they were like it, they were basically two different two different units but i treat this all as one combat that is not that cannot be the way they intended. Is everybody, is everybody following what I'm explaining right there? Like, how would you how would you have handled that? Is there something in the book that I've missed that applies to skirmish a, a big block of skirmishers getting charged by multiple units? I thought the response was going a different direction. Full response. I think it's fantastic that you're making FAQ. You know, I, I I don't want to, but I have to. <laughs> uh, Mount Miniature, just today we had a war con in a war game con in Hungary. Not a huge event, but there are a lot of games on display. I made a summary. Can you write can you write a comment on it later? I don't know what you mean, but send me yeah, send me an email, whatever. Let me know what you what you want and I can help you out. Sasha's absolute menace, and that's why we that's why we appreciate Sasha. Every channel needs their heel, and ours is Sasha. And Kyle is vying for that role. <laughs> I am having a good day. Unit splitting in two and breaking into cohesion cannot be the solution. I know, Kyle, but that's the way I handled it, because in that situation, it was least beneficial for me. Uh be, only no, because he was a demon and unbreakable, I because the the Literally, that we talked about earlier, the shrinking unit rule would mean eventually I would um, pull all in together. But if he wasn't a demon, I, I, I don't know how. I don't know what the I don't know what the right answer is. Whenever you get a chance, can skirmish be march blocked? I can't see why not, unless there's a rule saying they don't. Because fly fly can't be march blocked. But I believe skirmish can. Uh, Seb, can you can you tell me why you're asking the question? Uh, if you can help me out with more guys, did you read something that suggests that maybe they can't? Man, Mr. Hey, Steve, when are the edited live stream vids coming out uh, tomorrow? Uh, one's coming out tomorrow, so Monday and Tuesday. Unit you know, cohesion seems to be a uh, quite a strict rule. I, Kyle, I know. Roll for it, I, Ice Wolf. <laughs> Some of you are not helpful. <laughs> and it's Kyle and Sasha.
I can also be a heel. For example, I don't remember considering Brett Bombard's in the cans. The, um, is a Bombard a cannon? Well, I don't think I have I'm, to consider it, right? A Bombard's not a cannon. Unless it says it's a cannon. I'm still looking into the flank charge thing. And, and uh, what I can tell you so far is that when combat res comes around, they don't get flank bonuses for that res. Because it, it, it will be considered charging their front arc. Yes, yes, for sure. <laughs> they, if, no, that, that, that part's clear as day. No, no, no. Like they, uh, even though I was in what you could argue is two different... Like, I, I have my units facing two different directions, and yet they're yeah. both in the front. That part is clear. <laughs> no, the Bombard is definitely not a Ken. It's just a Bombard. It has Ken Fire, but it doesn't have Ken in the name anywhere. Page 130, multiple charge units movement is only simultaneous if both units are in the chip. Yes, actually, sorry, yes. That's a good point. Yes, I that came up in my yesterday in my video. So the only move simultaneously when they're in the same arc. So even though my models were this way and this way, they are both in the same arc of the enemy because the enemy is all front arc. That's okay. part of the problem. Sorry, yes, but yeah, that, that's exactly what came up in my video yesterday. Actually, I forgot to reiterate that right now. Hey, Steve, I'm wondering if you still have more battle reports like the ones you made in the early days. Yeah, Vincent, I put out a handheld battle report um, every Monday, but they're for members only because, um, well, several reasons. But yeah, every Monday I have a members only uh, battle report handheld. Tomorrow I'm putting up the first live stream edited battle report and a members only handheld uh, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning when I wake up. <laughs> Pretty sure the rules don't currently handle situations you're describing. But in lieu of an FAQ making units shrink towards the infantry is a valid way of handling it as any. Yeah, but sudden, like, do, um, would you have split them? I wish I had, I didn't think about talking about this today. I talk about it in my video, which is going to go up in like three weeks. Um, I wish I could show it off more because I, I, I want to know if my, I'm, I'm cooking my brain and running into a problem that's not really a problem. And people are like, oh, did you read this line right here? This is this is your answer. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. I guess one can argue for skirmishers have four front arcs. It's four different arcs, but your units were not in the same front arc. I that's the thing, Sven. Oh, Kyle Linden, thanks for gifting one mountain range skirmisher, brother. <laughs> Appreciate you. I just love you can thank Kyle for that. Hey, you can watch a video tomorrow morning. A handheld video. Tomorrow morning, uh, I'm gonna be playing Lizardmen versus Demons. I would rule that the skirmish unit would then consider the direction of the majority a unit facing as the front of the purpose. Of the so that's the excuse. How do you say your name? Stryfer? The problem with that is what if he happened to have his models facing one direction? But what if he was had literally facing every same line, but literally facing every direction, which is fully allowable in the rules. So how do we handle that in the, in, in a game? Test if I'm green again. <laughs> space lasers. That's right, Kyle. Space lasers solve all the problems. Is the same arc or is just that each arc is going to be the front because they do not have a flank and rear? Let's look at the exact wording on that, Karam. I believe the answer is the everything's considered front arc or thereabouts. I got it. Let's see. Unlike models in tightly ranked units, skirmishers can see more about around them. Uh, let's see. While in skirmish formation, models do not have flank or rear arcs. There you go. Instead, every arc is considered to be their front arc. Every uh, arc is considered to be their front 184. arc. Which is... Yeah. Which is interesting. And then the next page talks about them forming up, but... Again, it doesn't address the simultaneous thing. <laughs> that that's the part that's causing problems. So I'm trying I'm trying to find that rule to see if there's any clarification under it. Well, the, the diagrams on page one eighty six are why people think uh skirmishers uh can't redirect, but forgetting that like so the sorry, sorry, the words on the left uh tell you skirmishers can't redirect. The picture paints a different picture. And like, why is why are they contradictory to each other? Because you have to go back to the charge rules and realize, oh, the charging unit must wheel, must wheel to maximize the models in the charging unit, 
on the closest enemy model, which would be the skirmishing model. That's why you have to wheel all the way to that direction. That's how you re redirect your skirmishers. The skirmish unit would then decide his front arc. I don't think that's a fair interpretation. Uh, it, it does, it's, especially since it doesn't say anywhere. Because, again, its front arc is wherever it's been charged from, or where, where, wherever it has to form up into, but it's having yeah. to form up two directions at the same time. Uh... Yeah, sorry, no, Kyle, I'm playing, uh, Mitch, Mitch is bringing, uh, in, in tomorrow's game, a big combat bloodthirster, and I'm actually working on expanding my, my lizard rank, because my lizard lists are very similar every time, so I'm trying to get more models painted for them. What if the skirmish owner gets to choose which arc is in front, clearly being charged for multiple arcs? No, that's, that's too powerful for, if anything, if, if you're going to give one player the option to choose, it would be, in my opinion, it would have to be the non-skirmisher. I think skirmishers they, are already too powerful. Yeah, because I mean, at, I I think it would go to the non skirmisher because it how it would have to do, it would come down to the actual physical moving the models where they kind of determine which one gets there first. <laughs> Even though on the right now on the stack they both hit there at the same time, but that's my argument for them having priority to determine which side's the front. But we really don't. So we don't know. So like in that situation, I, I could have I would I don't know whatever this I would I could manipulate the rules to regain my impact attacks to make yeah. force them to make space. That can't be the intent, right? Right. Uh, got a quick question. I've seen old world builder a beast because twenty five points, but I don't see that in the Warriors of Chaos part of the book. Am I missing something? Yeah. Um, I can show you where it is. Let's go to Warriors of Chaos. Oh, here we go. It's right here. Uh, so go to the page. What page number is this? 55? Right here. Bowser and Bear. 25 points. It's in the little box on the composition page. Oh! You know what one thing that you guys need to... So I think some of you need to hear? The game, when you make an army list, the rules aren't 25% core. Um, In a roundabout way, it is a lot, but it's 25% of these models. Some people are still struggling with the ally thing. Thinking the allies take up their core becomes part of this core. Not a case. Your Grand Army composition must spend 25% on these models here. Anyways. Um, aren't the rules Defender declares reaction after all, char uh, all player charges? Yes. So the Defender would choose who he's facing. There's, But choosing who you're facing isn't, an, uh, isn't a reaction. There's no reaction in the rule book that says, now choose your facing. They have the option to stand and shoot, flee, hold. They were demons, they only hold. Yeah, there's there's not there's not a thing in the game that's the defender's gonna pick their facing. That's not a thing like, that's not, just not a rule. Isn't any charger rule that can't be calculated always given the worst option for their charger? Um, okay, so no, there is a rule that's if you're in multi, if if you're not sure which arc you're in when you charge the enemy, you take the one that's least beneficial for the charger. So that 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 whole rule doesn't apply in this case because there is only one arc. But I understand where your mind's going, and it's not a bad way of thinking. And that's what I'm looking for: thoughts like that, things that can kind of give you the intent here. Because for the most part, I think for damn near every rules question. That I've come across in this book, there is there is an, an answer. Like you can get the, you can figure out the intent, pretty much. In my opinion, this is the first one where I legitimately have no idea how to handle it. I guess the question is also: Can the skirmisher have two front darks? Uh, I, I don't believe so. No. No, they're 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 because they're, they're, their front arc is just but, an ongoing. One. Yeah, it's one so, arc still. Even though I just said I believe the answer is no, that's exactly how I was. I, I forced myself to play it. That's exactly how I ended up playing it. I mean, I think because if if somebody gets charged in the rear, 
the models can still attack back, right? Say it again. So, like, let's say one model charged from the front. This is you're, they're, they're, you're attacking skirmishers. One attack from the front, one attack from the back. You're, you form up into two ranks because you have to maximize. Both ranks can, can, like, one can attack forward, one can attack back, correct? Yes, yes. But there, there is no rear arc for them. Okay, so what, what I think it ends up being is if you, you're going to have to, you, you, I don't have rules to back this out. I'm still looking into it. But it seems to me you pick which way you're facing. You're, you, you, you can attack whichever way you want because they're not getting any re any flank or rear charge bonuses. It doesn't affect combat res at all. And then you can always be facing whichever way you you want when you get out because your your whole arc's your front arc. <laughs> Gage appreciates your your Magic the Gathering language, but actually, so do I. Uh, screamers have fly, but movement characters go one. Uh, can they rank up versus the chargers? Yeah, I don't believe. Let me double check that. I don't believe um, that matters. <laughs> uh, when it's it's charging skirmishers. I've I've checked out all the skirmish rules right now. I'm going through the unusual situation section under charging. <laughs> That's where most of the answers are found. Unusual situations, forming units. Uh, nope. Skirmishers and charging. Wait. Ah. Okay. That's a good. So who said that? Uh. Wait, who said that? Who said? Who said that? Is it up here? Clack here. Good point. So, you could argue that. Every other every other screamer would have made a, a line. Oh crap, you might be right. Okay. The fly rule supersedes your movement characteristic in every other case in the rule book. So I just would have had the the screamers fly into base contact with the first unit or whatever. But if you say they can't use their fly and they must use their movement of one, then my unit engaging the screamers that are like this would have engaged one and the rest would have lined up in a line behind them. And then the chariot goes in. Like, you're not, that. that's a, that's an argument. I don't believe that's accurate either, but that's an argument. Damn right, you expand your Lisbon effect by Lisbon for the rest of the year. No. I, fair, Sasha, I will do exactly that. See, if you take a look at the, my query above, a lot of debate and no clear answer when it came up. Uh, let's see. Backs. So declare all charges, reaction, move chargers in one by one in the skirmish book. Yeah, so Max, that's how that that's how I feel It's it should end up being. The issue is the rule book, unfortunately, right now does not cover that. It just says simultaneous. So they happen... You did, so there's not a the game does not track the time between when I move this unit in for the charge and when I move the next one in. I had one the other day, a giant charge of massive line of skirmishers that were parked a hair's width in front of multiple other units. What happens to the models that can't rank up behind you to no room? I would leave them where they're pretty much standing. Uh because they gain no rank bonuses and no flanks for all that kind of stuff, there's there's no down you wherever they were you put the ones in base contact with the giant, and the rest kind of like match up closer as close as they can. There's no negative game interaction with doing it that way at all. Uh, Kyle, I think it's more about um, uh, you can move your mo movement characters to, to get into base contact. So if the if the screamer, so the screamers are lined up like this, do do do, and I change on the, I came on the side. The second screamer over would be able to move in contact with the unit if they had to use their movement characteristic. So it would have to go behind the first screamer and then the next one, the next one, next one. I would have just played the fly value, but I do believe it does say the movement characteristic. No, but I have to go check fly because I think fly does say. Hey. 
flyer. No, it's flying. Flying? Or are you special rules? Yeah, I would say the Screamer could use the fly characteristic, but I guess if you use the exact rules as written, I can see the argument, but I don't think it's the intent. I think they can use a fly characteristic. So it's not going to help this, this current problem. You're, you're like, that's not necessarily a, oh, I could, I could see that being the FAQ Games Workshop rights. But the, yeah, no, you're, everything you're saying here is how I can see Games Workshop FAQing it. Movement does matter for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Ice Wolf, they were demons, they had no option to. Quick question about allies. Rules say one character and one non-character unit. Can that be anything? Like a lord and a rare? Yeah, but you need to have uh, you need to have your 25% like in a 500 point ally detachment, you still got to spend 125 points on models that would be core for that detachment. So if you can fit a character a rare and that core a contingent, yeah, you're fine. Not a, lot of, not a lot of armies can do that though. Yeah, uh, uh, Zoo. I can't remember how to pronounce her name. I ask you like every other week how to pronounce her name. Um, if you bring an an ogre ally contingent, you must bring bulls in your ally contingent. Well, yeah, no, that's it. You have to. But if you want, if you want ogres as allies, there are, there are better ways now with the mercenary rules for the dogs of war. I just will find out. That's that's how that's the that's the healthy way of handling it. If you can't find an answer right away, roll a die, move on. Uh, but I'm trying to like find these answers before they pop up in a stream or a game, so that we can have a reasonable answer. Here's the real question: When does an FAQ become an errata? Well, Gage, uh, 100% of Games Workshop FAQs are erratas. Every one of them, everyone for the past five years has been an errata. <laughs> How would you rule invocation to heck raising models so there's no space to do so? If there's no space for invocation, um, I would say you just can't put, you can't place the model. If you can't place the model, you can't place the model. The rules are on page 28. For vampire counts? Is that what we're talking about right now, Kyle? Gage, I would say it becomes an errata when you change the wording on the rule yep. as opposed to because there's sometimes there's the occasional blurb in FAQ where they say this is what this means that's that is not an errata in my book that you're not you're not changing the rule you're helping with the interpretation and after they went in and actually you know because they say every now and then replace this line with this that's an errata all right and every FAQ has a couple of those yeah, in, uh, from Games Workshop, anyway. Yeah, you just can't. You just can't fix. You just, uh, she just can't play some Kyle. Once there's no room, there's no room. Um, somebody asked me a question, and uh, Steve uh, about miniatures. Uh, topic allies. Do you know if you get victory points for killing an ally general? You sure do. If you have an ally contingent, you have two generals, thus two extra, two hundred extra bonus victory points on the table. If you bring another BSB, another bonus set of points for the BSB. Like there is very li okay. Well, there are there's a one instance where you can really cheese the game by bringing allies, but for the most part, in my opinion, you're making your army worse with allies. There, it's a narrative thing. If you if you're if you're trying to make your army more powerful using allies, you're probably trying to game the system. Like, if your army your armies have holes. Like the the, the issues I have with allies is uh, 
The only army that I can see off the top of my head, there's probably other instances where they're going to really benefit from it, are dwarves allying an empire. Now all of a sudden you have a wizard and knights. And better cannons, if you want. No, they actually could. A, a 2,000 points of dwarves can bring in a wizard, a unit of knights, and a better cannon. That should, like, I do not believe they should have, the allies should be filling holes of your army. I don't think it, it, it throws off the balance. Bit off topic, I just ordered yet another batch of boom and trays. My discount was high enough that your code didn't work. I used your link and used it. My discount was high enough your code didn't work. Oh, your discount. Uh, if, you, if you use the link in any of my videos, I still get credit. I still get a kickback. So, thank you. <laughs> Even if you don't use coupon code Mountain Ten, um, you uh, use my if you use the link in my video, my descriptions, I get something. Uh, the, the the AOS to Square Base converting trays are selling like really really well. I'm stoked for that. Uh, fourth edition AOS is around the corner. We're gonna be able to. I, I'll not, I now have my Ogre Army for AOS and for Fantasy, which I'm stoked about. Um, I don't. Ex I fully expect. Like the Dark Elves, not to be uh, in Sage of Sigmar in Fourth Edition, so that's why I put them on square bases. Uh, but yeah, uh, demons and stuff. Anything I work on in the future that works for both game systems. Like when I when I redo, um, my Vampire Counter Army with the Soulblade models, I'll make sure I use uh, the converting mo the converting bases so I can play multiple game systems. Steve. Yeah. I found something about the skirmish and charge question. Yes. Uh, I did. I did it. It. It doesn't necessarily answer but it, it makes it worse in my opinion i don't like it oh no <laughs> so Poor if <laughs> if you got your unit stretched out you know facing forward and they charge your left and right flank oh page you your unit your unit can end up over one inch apart because they have to each model has to try to move into direct contact with an enemy so it splits down the middle and they go each way <laughs> what, what, what page are you reading uh, this is using page 186. Because they, let's see. It must, it must endeavor to move as directly as possible with base contact with the closest model in the target unit. So, <laughs> okay, so you know what? Maybe I have a. With skirmishers piling in, like it, they have to go to the closest one. So if it's possible to not have a fighting rank, or if no, you no, not no. have someone behind that, yeah. Keep, hold on, keep reading. However, no, no model in the charge unit can move further than its movement characteristic. Fine. Any skirmish, any skirmishers that cannot make base contact must instead form up behind the fighting rank. I know, but I'm saying like you got two. You're, you're charged from both sides. You're the, the the second in line on your left flank can't make it to your right flank, so he has to form up over there, and he just keeps doing that going forward. This is uh, this is where it'd be great to have like TTS going, where we could have just be placing models as if. Ooh, should... that's not a terrible idea. Because you could do this with just like square base. You don't need models for this; just rectangles. Okay, you know what? Uh, I will try to get that set up for next week. If, if if more of this stuff pops up. Yeah. The way you guys are sending me emails, more of this is going to pop up. <laughs> I love this. Now, Same thing, Scott. I, I, love, I love hanging out and chatting Warhammer. <laughs> now say this. The, the odds of you stretching your line of skirmishers out so thin where you're running a large enough unit for that to happen, very, very low. Very unlikely. <laughs> um. Okay, so... I don't... Okay, the the more uh the more I'm understanding the movement phase, the more I'm playing, the more experience I'm getting with this game, uh, the more Lucas, uh, more experience Lucas getting with this game, I can definitely see this situation coming up more and more with us. Okay. Because skirmishers, um, they look daunting. A lot of people just gloss over the rules and ignore them, uh, or play them wrong, and I have as well. Uh, but once you learn how to use them, it's okay. MSP, Kyle. <laughs> I could do it. I can open a paint. <laughs> Actually, you know what? No, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to paint. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like in 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 high level play, uh, skirmishers are going to be a big part of the what you what, the way you're doing. It just will be. 
Uh, if you're gonna go to an event, you're gonna see skirmishers on in, in, in every like. Well, no, I think just what everybody's gonna bring them for one reason or another. So they're 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 gonna be very powerful at redirecting your opponent, which is a very excuse me important thing in this game. So resolving this issue or finding this answer is, I think, necessary sooner than later. What about the only part of a unit of skirmishers that flees through a formed unit? Do the ones outside move through to maintain coherency, or are they lost? What about the part of a unit of skirmishers? I'm gonna look up skirmishers and flee because I know the area he's talking about. Um, sure. I can, I can, I can. If I, if I understand the question, and I'm notorious for not understanding the question all the time, um, every skirmish model moves like a unit onto himself, so they would move. They would just um move center to center from their position to their enemy position. If that ends up through the enemy unit, it does or it doesn't. But every uh, every skirmish model moves like an individual unit. I don't mind paying for a tabletop simulator so long as I can better articulate these uh, situations. Because, like, how many of you uh, watching the video right now are not following this problem? Am I explaining it well enough? Like, how many of you are just like, I don't know what they're talking about. This doesn't make any sense to me. Like, I, I have a guy who needs visuals. <laughs> and the nice thing is, if you have someone in the call that's talking about it, they can join the instance of TTS and set up what they're talking about so they don't have to relay it to you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, we definitely we definitely got to get this set up for rules issues. You know what? Um, I'll, I can... I keep meaning to make a video on skirmish, but I'm so freaking busy. I can find time at home to do it if I use TTS. Now, if you're making a video, you got to do like PowerPoint MS Paint. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually think um, a lot of the skirmish stuff is, um, if you visually explain it, pretty simple. I think it's like a 45 second video. And people go, oh, I see. I get what you mean now. Yeah. It is like, uh, this is this is definitely the fault of the writers of this book. Um, they rewrite something sometimes, not all the time. They needed to rewrite part of the charge rules in the skirmish section to better explain their yeah. diagram because their diagram, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said they just <laughs> determined who, if they just said who who picks or like you know. The the player that's charging moves one in first. Like if they, they have to, one of those things ha has to happen first. If they just say which one, <laughs> then it's fine, no problem. A question going back to allies: What if the game was balanced around you bringing allies to fill your holes? Yeah, I mean, you, the I don't really the, want allies to be balanced, in, especially not in that way, because then you're playing the same game every game. So, so my opinion is it doesn't matter what I or Spoons or anybody wants to try to figure out what the rule is, right? Yeah. But that being said, I don't think the Allies rules, if you use them correctly, do fill any holes with the exception of dwarves. Like Empire Ally for dwarves. I think everybody else, you're making your list a little bit weaker by bringing Allies. Everybody yeah, that's the only instance of an alliance that would make sense anyway, outside of chaos bringing like demons or something like that. Oh, you know? uh, chaos and beastmen. Like, is your list gonna be better? The, for your... your your chaos forces are the only place I'd yeah. make it where I think outside of humans and dwarves it makes sense. But the thing is, I um I don't think I don't think warriors of chaos ally and and any beastmen fill any holes that they, no. they can't fill themselves already, and vice versa. I think the only combo. Um, yeah, but see, I don't know if Kyle, see, I don't, I'm not an expert. I just claim to be. Uh, I don't think Kyle's bringing in, uh, cheap infantry fills a hole the army needs to have filled. Because your, your more expensive infantry are that much more valuable. And, this, and then when they get shot to death, all you're left is the cheap crappy infantry. And yeah, it just, yeah, it just, I don't, I, I don't think. Hiles ally in cheap infantry is a net benefit for the way Hiles are going to play. But again, you know, I got to 
repeat this repeatedly throughout the rest of my life. My opinions are mine from my play experience and my play style. The way you play, maybe it's a you know a big net benefit for you. Uh, crisis gear. That's what the the overall debate this entire stream has been because it happens at the same time. So we don't know which one they align to. Currently, rules is written. You kind of have to do both. Crisis. There's there's no <laughs> way you just came up. We've been talking about the whole thing. <laughs> I think we have a legit. I don't know the answer one. Well, yeah. there there is um. I don't the the drilled. I believe that I have an answer for it. This one, I don't have an answer for it, which is um a little discouraging. But it took three months for me to get to one that I cannot come up with an answer, or at least uh, I at least I can't come up with some sort of intent. Yeah, because there are multiple places where like it indicates and says. You have to try your best to get everyone you can into combat. Again, they don't make contact fighting. No, no, tall cash. If anything, I'm arguing a little bit on your side. <laughs> and my opinions are colored by the fact that I hate Hiles. Oh my god, I've played more Dragon Princes and DPOP guys. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Oh, man. oh no. <laughs> you might, Steve, you might be able to kill. Large units of skirmishers just by charging them. Let's, what? let's see what page 184 says. Christopher Blackburn says if skirmishers split, then they get removed as casualties. <laughs> so, like, if you have that long line scenario, I was talking. Oh about. my god, are you serious? <laughs> where, 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 184? The middle might just you have to pick a side; the other one dies because <laughs> they have to move towards base contact, but moving towards base contact kills them. <laughs> But again, you have to be running what? a large unit of it. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Think about this, Spoons. Uh, you have uh, you have ten Empire archers. Let's say you can only be one inch apart. So yeah, you 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 really can't be. A, you, that happens with it. That might answer our question actually. So so skirmishers <laughs> getting multi charged just die. Half of them just die before we get to combat. Like the ones you, you you try your best. To did we as many as you did can we act to one side? Did we actually find an answer here? A unit skirmishers must end his movement in coherency. It's, it's, it's a movement. It is technically a movement, but it's not a movement. I when removing casualties from skirmishers, you cannot remove the models so doing so with cosmetic coherency. You must instead move, remove a different model. Should it ever occur that a unit skirmishers has lost its coherency, you must remove models from play as casualties until only a single coherent group remains. In such cases, models removed are armed. Wait. Are assumed to have fled the battlefield in most cowardly fashion, and we know skirmishers getting charged must move directly closer to the closest model. You are right; there is an answer here. There is a Our rules as written, clear as they Thank answer. <laughs> Who was that? Christopher Blackburn. He found <laughs> Christopher Blackburn. I owe you a pretty present. You are. This is so dumb, but you are right. So, <laughs> Mitch would have been rules as written, forced to remove casualty till his. Uh, very expensive screamers until he's back in coherency. Yeah, you know, the best part is, is that can cause a panic, but it won't count for combat res because it happened before combat. <laughs> so you can just panic skirmishers off the field pretty easily. <laughs> uh, it's so dumb, but it, it, the, the, well, it, 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 it's the answer. That, that's the answer. You know, you know what makes me feel really good? I every time one of these situations come up, you spend enough time in the rule book, you can get an answer. I doubt this is the answer Games Workshop intended. No, <laughs> I, I I would not be surprised if they this, see this is this would be an instance when GW comes out the FAQ of an errata because you have to change something. If there's no intent, you can clarify to fix this. Do you think that's how we should play it? Like, objectively, do you think that's how we should play it? I, I think that's how you should play it until it gets fixed. Yeah, no. It... <laughs> the... the thing. It's not going to be that busted because you're going to have to invest so much of your movement and your units into making it happen. That, like, you're not going to be running around just gaming it the whole time, you know? No, Ozzy. Okay, can I tell you something, Ozzy? 
Okay, well, first of all, Dirty Deeds, it, the, the, the owning player would pick which malls they're going to remove. Ozzy, the hilarious thing is, is um, Luke and I have been talking about doing Core Hammer. So I've been putting together all the lists of Core Hammer I can play um, for upcoming streams or whatever. And I put a unit of 20 Rangers in a list. I'm like, yeah, nope, that would, that would nope they're definitely going to get charged to death. <laughs> I charged dwarves, half of them are dead. <laughs> or I... Cap on you, you. Thank you for understanding the point I'm going to go through. Technically, you read the best kind of correct. You, <laughs> I would, I would go ahead and add these those those page numbers to the FAQ now. Uh, oh yeah, actually, it's 184 in. Uh, let me find the the skirmish one. 184 and 186, I believe. I don't want to yeah, work on this. This is so bad. <laughs> Will anybody does will anybody want to trade painting services from me for writing services of like making this coherent? Because oh god, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at my notes. <laughs> no, Christopher, that's the thing. That's the thing. Um, if if your skirmishers are. That, that would force them to pretty much always be face to base. And um, then we have one. Yeah, that's and good. then the second one side, like say you have a big block. See, let's say you have a unit of 20 Rangers and a block tight, 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 tight on each other. They're in formation and they're engaged on two sides. Technically, everybody's in their front. Casualties are coming. One side's not doing any damage, one side's doing damage. You have to start pulling malls away, and eventually they're going to be at a coherency. No, I, I think you start running skirt. What I think you do is, yeah, Christopher also I think has a good solution. You uh, you start running deeper units of skirmishers. Dirty deeds. This is like thirty minutes of writing. I will trade two hours of painting for thirty minutes of writing, not two hundred night columns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this. I think Christopher has the tactics right on that. You just you run. More ranks instead of instead of a long line, you just go from deeper. Yeah, but I mean, if you're even if you're deeper, it's something that's around behind you and on both both of your far sides. Yeah. Uh, well, is, that, 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 this is this is what helps you because the ones that can't get into where they're fighting form up behind, so that you can you can have the two ends meeting each other for like you know a models within an inch of a model. So, but but what, but what I'm saying is once you know this rule. Um, you game it. You can you can game it. Yeah. Uh, is there a way to watch battle reports from old World Wars that should be vault videos but don't show up for like the first fifty episodes? Uh yeah, Owen. I believe you can buy a hard drive from the Mini Wargaming store with those those videos still on it. If you if you can't find it, just email support at miniwargaming dot com, and they can answer that question or at least track them down for you. Can a grill roller crate be picked up by a giant? You're, I think the answer is yes. I didn't thought about that, but that seems not right. My mind would never think to do that because that's probably not the intent. But what's the wording on pick up and? I hate the skirmish thing so much. <laughs> Does it count as regular infantry or? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I just want to like, oh, you know, skirmisher of the game. Skirmishers are my favorite part of the game, but I'm just done. <laughs> I, I, I really hope that gets clarified in the in FAQ because otherwise, that means, well, I don't know which is worse. It just continuing to exist and no FAQ happening, so, so... or an FAQ happening that doesn't change it, and we learned that that's what they wanted it to be. <laughs> Okay, rules as written here, the answer is yes, but I'll tell you what, right now, I am more than comfortable of putting on my FAQ, no. <laughs> yes, Giant but no. <laughs> I can't spell this. But are know. your FAQ, are you going to put like in parentheses at the end of each blurb, whether you're siding with intent or rules as written? Oh no no! I, so not only am I not only am I gonna 
not only am I going to put out the document on uh, every video, but when you click on the document, there'll be a link to a video where I explain why I get here. And when I talk about this one, my, my, well, to be clear, I'm going to send this off to a bunch of people with more knowledge than me before yeah, I get finalized. <laughs> and, and then like, I'll hope to be like, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I would change, Steve, I think you should change this one to this. That's what I'm hoping to get back from. But that being the case, when I talk about what I just, the giant one right there, is I am very confident that if if this got to the Games Workshop FAQ guys, and they go, oh yeah, technically that is heavy infantry, but it's not meant to be, so it cannot be, cannot pick up. You can, uh, you can't pick it up until it's the last mall or something like that. Yeah. That's, I'm very, very confident in that ruling. Any chance for brief views explaining complex stuff Combat situation and rules would help the game grow a lot. Yeah, so the thing, Tallcash, is I don't know what is needed. Um, that's why I'm working on this FAQ. And then w- once I... This... I, I'm just going to force myself to not paint anything until I get this done. So I'm going to get this done tonight. Um, then I'll, uh, if there's pushback or constant conversation about any of the stuff I'm talking about in this FAQ, th- that means a video is definitely required. So the, the amount... So this is... This is kind of how do I put this? How do I how do I say this without sounding like a creep twat? Um, th- that's a lot of work. That doesn't benefit me. And it's only for you guys. <laughs> so I have to balance how much of that I actually do. That sounded so douchey. <laughs> and oh, we, I would rather make you a battery for it. What's that? With commands of the Grail thing, it's uh, apparently it says on the unit it cannot be removed as casualty until all Grail pilgrims are removed. You know what? It's off the FAQ. Yeah, there we go. Cool. Easy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> See, turns out Steve, just keep reading your rule. <laughs> yeah, well, no. you know what? You know what the real problem is here? Flammable hero isn't here. He's dropping the ball today. I need the boy. I need him. Yeah, but talk cash. You know what? Is as 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 much as I try to make every decision. From a business standpoint, um, truth be told, I love just making bad reports. <laughs> it's a great idea, Steve. We have to, you have to tell Flamable here about the skirmish thing. I, I want to know what he has to say. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I like the, I, I think I hate the ruling, but I, I like I, that I there's an like answer. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, again, I like that there's an answer, but I really hope it gets changed. <laughs> Because that would just be the worst thing to find out that that's how GW intended. <laughs> Actually, put it perfectly. <laughs> Thank you, Talkash. <laughs> wow, Steve Rude. I know, I know. I, I am. I never. My intent is to not not be rude or upset anybody, but I like to talk combatively, sarcastically, and aggressively because I'm I'm just joking around. But I'm always trying to like tone it down because. Mostly it's you Europeans that don't... No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it's just... It, 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 not everybody likes that type of humor or type, my, my attitude about stuff like that. But some of you some of you are here just for it. Um, so I try to like tone it down, but I, as I'm getting exhausted, not with, not with the game, but with trying to perfect it, um, I'm, my, my patience is shortening. But not a bad way. It, it became... <laughs> and sometimes reading the rules... It does explain the rules, but some of the explanation hurts. Like, yeah, um, no, it's like I, I have fun doing it, but I hate that it has to be done. Like, that there's an sense? instance <laughs> in Magic where a card removes itself from a, the stack after it puts something else on the stack above it. Like it just it takes itself out from the middle of the stack, and I hate it. <laughs> there's a couple of things like that where it's like, yes, this is how it works. No, I don't like it. <laughs> no, you are no. I, so. Uh, I'm too polite to you Aussies. You guys can take way more. <laughs> I'm aware. Like, uh, for example, rules that you know you can that, that that's how it works objectively. Don't like it. It's the there's a card called approach the second sub. You cast it from your hand for if it's the second time you cast it, you win the game. You can copy it on the stack and make your first cast the one. I that wins. hate everything <laughs> what you're saying right now, dude. <laughs> If you need a web dev, get in touch. I don't even know what I would do, Grumpage. There's no more work I could do. I don't even know. What... Yes, eventually it's something I'm going to need. 
but I'm expanding my staff and what I can do as, as much as I can. I don't know what a website does for me right now. Not that I don't need one. I Maybe I do. I just don't know what it does for me right now in the current stage of this business. In, you know, in, in summary, and I think you'll agree with the summary, Steve. Reading the rule explains the rules, but sometimes the rule is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened at Depticon? Oh, uh, no, there was just a... Um, what appears to be some of the judges had some uh, rule stuff that haven't come up before, but we went through them all. Basically, rules is written, gyrocopters and bombers can bomb lone characters, which is, it's not going to go that way in the, uh... <laughs> thank you, Telecash. It's not going to go that way in an FAQ, so rule against that. And then there's a couple of things that, there there are several rules in this game where, uh, like, for example, I'm, I'm going to make a, just so nobody thinks this is the real thing, I'm going to make an example that's not real and I'm going to exaggerate it. But if you go to fire your longbow and you didn't look at the rule under Arcane Tower that explains longbows also have armor piercing, like that's on you for not going to a section that wasn't relevant at all. But that's a lot of the rules in this edition. So what I was about to say before is this is my favorite edition of Warhammer Fantasy. I love this one more than any other. But it appears to me this one has more rules quirks. and. While I can technically uh, tend to find the answer, it takes longer to find the answers in this edition than any previous edition. Is anybody else having the same experience as me? Thank you, Solicis. I can't read. I'm also, I'm not very educated. Matthew Willis, let's just start, uh, uh, I was going to say race war, but race war is not the right thing. I think it's more of a culture thing, but Geographical war. No, that's all wars. Target opponent loses next turn. Oh, we're talking magic. I I think I like the nomadic law, and I think I hate troll horde. I have decided that I hate stupidity more than frenzy. Because at least I'm charging with frenzy. Yeah, you're it'd be the same thing. Caveman, see, here's the thing. Now, I, I literally, yes, they do. You have to read the the arcane rules. Arcane, yeah, I forgot. Does this mean pterodons uh, can drop rocks on characters? Um, no, the answer is no. So, uh, rules as written, you can argue the answer is yes, friend of Yoda, but in my FAQ, the answer is no. Because it's going to be ruled no. So I'm just going to get ahead of it. It's going to be no. Zagwar, any that can get into base contact. Anyone that can't has to form up behind. Check out the rules for Soul Grinder. I can do that, Nemo. But, uh, Demons. <laughs> My print is done and now it's all silent. But you know, Brando, it's it's better to have to flip a couple sections over and know the answer than to have to be guessing at intent the whole time. Agreed. You know, even if it's poorly written, it's at least there. Wait, what and actually, with the about? skirmish one, turns out it was there. We were just skipping over a page. Because <laughs> that's a, the one little section in the 180s. I don't understand your question, Nemo. Um, Harvester Cannon. Oh, no, I don't care. I don't care about the screening them at all, friend of Yoda. 
I just want to charge what I want to charge. Yeah, what's wrong with Harvest Cannon? There's nothing wrong with Harvest Cannon. Oh, your, your whole argument with the cannon thing was anything that has the word cannon in the name should get to do it. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> but it, it also has her pr printed there. Oh, he literally says, I can cannon fire grape. <laughs> yeah. So this thing does exactly what I said it does, says it does, right? I, I am, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be sarcastic. I'm confused. This thing fires exact. This thing it is a cannon. It just specifies that it loses a wound instead of suffering yeah. a misfire. That's, yeah. That's it. It, 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 it has the same. It has the same. Needs more nails. Rules as everybody oh, else. Oh, you're just saying how it references. Okay. I, I, I know. I know. Actually, I was lying. I actually was doing the thing. Because <laughs> I'm not a good person. <laughs> Thank you. That means they can never form significantly wider front rank than a unit that charges them, right? Uh, not really. No, Zug. If you're talking about skirmishers, yeah. wait, prove you wrong. Characters don't give up their monstrous mount. Ca characters don't give their monster mount their saves. The game is instantly better. Prove me wrong. Zug, like we're not as significantly, but remember, corners are base context. Like, yeah, if a chariot. It charges your or single character. You have three in base contact that you can get because you have the ones touching and then one on each corner. So you 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 can always be wider than what charged you, but not not significantly. So two things, Nemo. No, 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 nowhere, nowhere uh, on the Soul Grinder did they write a rule on the Soul Grinder that says cannons can't fire grape shot because um, the rule for grape shot is all cannons can fire grape shot. So I don't know why you're referencing the Soul Grinder to stop. Uh, I, I, needs more nails is just better grape shot. It's just so. it's just better grape shot. Oh no, needs more nails is the grape. Oh no, yeah, it's not. Anyways, uh, Toll Cash, I'm not sure what you're saying because characters, char monsters don't. You use the better this two saves. I'm I'm confused as what you're trying to say. Uh, and this time I'm not being sarcastic. I actually don't know what you're trying to say, uh, uh, Toll Cash. Are the live battle reports repeats going to be for members only? No, 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 no. So, uh, sorry, yes, Tom. Sorry, yes. If you weren't there, you probably didn't see this. No big deal. Um, the live battle reports are going to get edited down because um, people are going to be requesting that like crazy. So I'm going to try to see if I'm able to do that. So the live battle reports after the stream will remain for members only so members can watch the live battle reports in their entirety. But on Monday and Tuesday, so tomorrow, I'm going to re-upload the live battle reports edited down. Uh, so all like the extra stuff is cut out. So tomorrow, so tomorrow I'll be putting up the troll horde battle report. And then on Tuesday, I'll put up the pneumatic wah battle report. Editing out all of the conversation with chat. And, and then I'm going to find out if d working in this industry for 10 years, um, which I like to say a lot apparently lately, uh, I've learned what people ask for regularly isn't what they actually want. I want to see if you guys actually want this. I want to see how the numbers are. And if it's not actually a thing that people want, I'll go back to the old style. Uh, Clack here has a good question about random attacks. I have a model with random attacks against plus one attack characteristic, like from Furious Charge. Does it get plus one to his roll on attacks, or does it technically have an attack characteristic? Or does it technically... You want to know if it I guess I you wonder if it loses random attacks or if it's random plus one. Is that like? Oh, it's random plus one. Yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, it's it's, it's three plus one. Um, because random tells you to roll a whatever, and that becomes your attack characteristic. And then you have an ongoing plus one to. And then you add plus one, yeah. So, yeah. No editing down, make them longer. Well, Blaze, as a member, or if you're live, you don't have to be a member to watch them live. If you're live, you get to watch all of the chat as normal. If I'm, when is the next Mitch battle report? Is tomorrow morning, tap on tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow when I wake up, if a monster mount, I'm starting to stay up later, not working for many wargaming Monday to Friday. I'm, I'm, I'm staying up later and later and later and waking up later and later and later. Well, if a monster mount don't get the save, then. That would ruin monsters completely and would be unplayable. Wait, what are you talking? Victor, what are you talking about? Wards and armor a character takes passes to their mount.
What, I don't know. I don't know where you guys are getting these. Uh, I think you guys are making a bunch of stuff up. They've been going at that monster and armor save stuff for a minute. I uh, one of two things is happening here. I'm fundamentally misunderstanding what you're talking about, or you guys don't understand how monsters work. <laughs> so their debate has been: the, if you if you buy a character, does his armor board and region save carry to the mount? That's what they're debating. The the mount isn't a thing. The mount is an upgrade to the character. The mount's not a separate thing. Like I have I have a monster on screen. It gives the character plus four wounds. It gives the character four more strength five attacks that don't benefit from like weapons and magic items and stuff. Like they're not it's not a separate thing. You don't attack the mount separately from the character. There is yeah, Kyle's right, there is no mount. <laughs> The cake is alive. <laughs> I love the live that report. It feels like a community. I, I I love doing them, Dan. I love hanging out with you guys and just chatting and playing Warhammer. But there's a lot of people who just want to see the game, which I get, totally get. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna edit down and see if it's actually a thing that's wanted on mass or just a few uh, tiny voices that are allowed. When does Johnny Payne come back? Well, um. There's a chance I'll go to him this fall and uh, we'll do some videos with him because uh, he lives relatively close to um, the, the narrative event. The narrative 40k event. I think you're going to be pretty close to where I am if I remember where Johnny Payne is. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? I, 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 I hate travel. There's a store about two hours away from me that I know Johnny Payne has visited every now and then. So I know he's not too far from that. He's good people. And if John, if you're watching, I'm going to thank you for the 57th time for coming with us to uh, Warhammer the Old Sorry, the Old World. I mean, Warhammer World. He did a fantastic job doing what I was supposed to be doing. Um, <laughs> while we're in the Demon's Codex, don't you think Corn should have friends? Yes, Jeff. Yes! I don't understand why they don't. <laughs> no, Sasha, just you. I had to find a way to get you off the screen. But then everybody else had to go with you. Uh, Troll High Trousers and the Seed, uh, the seed of Rebirth are two, two magic items that are probably too good. The question isn't what is the current rule. The question is would the game be better if it worked differently? Oh, okay. Thank you. See, like I said, sometimes I'm just not understanding the question. Would it work? Would it be different? Would it be better? I don't know. Because now, now you have to explain to me how it, it would work if it worked differently. But like, but every 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 mounted every every character on a dragon. Doesn't need the dragon's armor to get there. It, it it doesn't use the dragon's armor to get there. The 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 character buys full plate, a shield, and then um, usually another magic item to get plus one saves to get the two up. The mount themselves are never uh, adding any contribution to the save ever. Friend of you, that's a that's a fair trade. I would agree. Give give the uh, troll eye trousers flammable. Dan Brooks, honestly, in my opinion, the answer is yes. My my channel blew up. I I turned a profit. I started turning this into a a living, a job, because I went live and it was you guys. I was doing my channel for like three or four years at a massive loss every month. I just did it for fun. Um, I dumped money in, nothing came back out. I go live and right away. It was you guys that was a success, not me. Later, Crisis Gear. That's actually true, Sasha. Have you not read that in the rule? It's in the Arcane Ruins section of the rule book. How much would it cost you in order to make the videos longer? Add you and Lucas sitting the singing the Canadian hash anthem before the re-uploads. Yeah, we could probably do that. The problem is um we 
Luca works for Mini Wargaming still, um, and he gets off work at five. Comes he's right pulling now. a double for that. He's <laughs> already pulling a double. So it, when when we make enough money to put to, to have Luca quit Mini Wargaming or at least go to ultra part time like I did, um, then we have more time for him. So we have to like we have to increase revenue by a few thousand dollars a month, and then we can do that. And we will we will add um, our version of the Canadian national anthem. Man, channel growth is still going, but the boom has definitely yeah for sure made it. Like yeah, it's not it's not it stopped, but it's not you're at your regular pace now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, we're not going to touch your singalms. A vampire uses dragon's armor. Yes. Okay. So off the vampire does use the dragon's armor. That's fair. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if like, I think, I think I think you're looking at it kind of backwards, in my opinion. But like, maybe I'm looking at it backwards. I think the problem is dragons. Dragons need to get toned down. Dragons are probably at least a hundred points under costing. Twenty bucks will make look at anything. Are gores finally great? I think so. Does anybody wanna does anybody have a bits box full of uh left-handed gore hand weapons? Because all mine have shields and it drives me bananas. <laughs> Because <laughs> mine was my my gores were originally for Age of Sigmar, so yeah. shields was the best option. Double hand weapon is infinitely better in war, the old world. Hell, if yeah, gores came fun. with free light armor and I have the shield or a great or additional hand weapon, I would still take the additional hand weapon. Are wizards on dragons big issues? Yeah, I believe so. Cap on, I believe so. Also, different point of view. The rules aren't more quirky, but there are more new people with new perspectives that look at the rules and find things that are. Yeah, a vol... how would I say that? Voljax, Voltax. You are, you are, you, you very well could be hundred percent right. That is a distinct possibility. Because um, yeah, think, think of how little growth Warhammer Fantasy, yeah, has had overall. But now you got old world, which actually for the first time in years, new people. Looking at it. Warhammer Eighth Edition. Um, I, I'm happy to call myself an expert on Eighth Edition. Uh, went to tons of events, lots of stuff. Like one play, like like I I where I know Warhammer Eighth Edition. But even at even eight years on, there was like, oh, did you know technically if you this 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 and this it doesn't work like the way we all been doing it for the last five years. Uh, the internet <laughs> has made our tiny community, um, feel enormous or just tracking things down way faster. So yeah, Vol- Voltax might be 100% right. It may be no different than be- ever before. It just has way more eyes on it. Like, there are definitely more people watch. No, I say this with certainty. There are more people watching Mini Wargaming's modern old world than 8th edition when it was in production. The, the, the fantasy community is bigger than it's ever been online. The fantasy community online is bigger than it's ever been. Uh, I think the the dragon slaying sword is probably going to be. I don't know how many people in the the the, the Adepticon tournament had it in their list, but I would assume most did. I think it's going to be a staple in any competitive list. It just um, it'll it, it keeps your opponents honest. I mean, I I don't know if I would bring dragons. <sighs> I don't know. It's hard to say. Is this the uh, the horse heresy thing of armored ceremony? Always pay for this. Always pay for this. Yeah. <laughs> like... Yeah. So what, what, what Spoons is talking about, so there's um, melted guns in Horus Air City. These they break tanks. So there's an upgrade you can buy. It's like 20 points. It's an expensive upgrade to make you immune to the melter rule. So everybody would, everybody, everybody would bring every vehicle with those 20-point uh, upgrade armor ceramite rule. And then everybody stopped bringing melted guns because they didn't do anything anymore. And then for like years, we were all paying 20 points extra per vehicle for armor ceramite. Like there's no point. Nobody brings melta. And then we stop bringing armored ceramite. Also, Melta showed up again. It's like, oh, here's how you handle this: you pay for armored ceramite. That's just it. <laughs> so maybe the dragon slaying sword is part of your armies. There's a guy on a Pegasus somewhere with a dragon slaying sword. 
He can go hunt war machines if necessary, or skirmishers. He can he can get in the backside of skirmishers now and charge them to outright kill them on the charge with somebody else. He has multiple purposes. I think I think um, Tomb Kings are not a top tier army. I think they have one of the better dragons in the game, but Tomb Scorpions OP. <laughs> dragons aren't the yeah. Fair, Christopher, you're not wrong. <laughs> if everyone has a dragon slayer, yeah, no, yeah, how many jerks? That's <laughs> that's true. Oh, hobby jerks. I watch your stuff. Keep going, man. There's not many people making better ports, so I appreciate it. I don't like I don't like watching my own. <laughs> well, listening to stuff while I paint. I wish I could put a dragon slate sword in grave guard or blood eggs. Oh my god, Kyle. That would be you can't, right? That would be the most busted thing. <laughs> you like Grail Knights, Hammers, Temple Guard are great versus dragons for infinite challenges. Yeah. That's true. But the dragon typically has the speed to stay away from all of those units. Except for maybe the Grail Knights. And Doppelganger Wizard, Dragon Slayer Sword. <laughs> Uh, I don't want that to be the end. I just, I, I would rather, okay, take take a Dragon Slaying Sword out of the game and increase the cost of dragons by about 100 to 150 points. Dragon games have been, yeah, dragon games, I think for most of us, have been the least fun games. It's usually very, they're usually very one-sided. Can you rate a unit I'm going to use in a 40-man 2,000-point tournament? I can, absolutely, Thomas. Tell me what you got. I just want to point out that my experience competitively in this edition is non-existent, but I can give you some feedback. Dragons need counters if you exist. It's true. It's true. You're not wrong, Talcash. I just wish dwarves could have a room to increase um the their cannon strength. I think if I were to I probably if I were to take dwarves to a competitive event and assuming the allowed allies, um I would bring in a Empire a Empire Great Cannon or two. I'd probably bring a wizard, archers as core, and great cannons. The dwarves got robbed by their cannons only being D3. Night Gobble Wabos with Destiny Armor. Okay, 70 points for a 4 board save on a character that only costs like 40 points. Wallop was 1-Hit Wonder and a Giant Squig. Okay, so... That's his... Thomas, that's a character that I've used and played against a lot. You're better off... You're better off buying Talisman of Protection... And troll high trousers. I this exact same points to armor of destiny. It's one less ward save, same armor save, and regen. It's mathematically better. And the way I just used him is how I've, he's kind of a staple. Uh, if you're trying to do well, the way random move works now, it's just really good. Skeleton champions tie John Dragons very well, yeah. But you ideally you don't uh the dragon so when we talk about these things you got talking you got we're talking in a vacuum, right? But the dragon shouldn't ever engage undead blocks of infantry until they're able to pin down the anything with the invocation of the hex special rule. Anybody that can raise the malls back up, you need to engage them before you engage their infantry with anything that can be challenged out. And the dragon character has the speed to do that. If you're if you're if you're playing a dragon and you go get caught by using a twenty five or even twenty skeletons, you deserve to lose the game. You done bad. <laughs> they still don't see me play a dragon game. Are you serious, Nemo? 
Uh, Nemo, leave the stream right now. Go to Mini Wargaming. Go watch um, Hiles versus uh, Vampire Counts. Nobody give him any spoilers. Just go watch the Battle Report, Nemo. Any bets on the Muna Monster Slate item? I, if that, if that better not ever exist, Brando. That better never exist. They're too expensive for that, Kyle, but yeah. I think they'll, I don't think they'll get that, Brando. Oh, no way. They definitely would get that. What am I saying? Oh, my God. We all know the Dwarf Arcane Journal is already written, but now I have this hope that there's a plus one damage rune for the cannon. Oh, that would be awesome. Kyle, what the? What did I just say? No spoilers. <laughs> Troll hammer torpedoes are damn nice for sure, Ice Wolf. You skipped my comment about that game. Oh, yeah, whatever. It's hard to see all the comments, dude. <laughs> oh, I, I recorded another one. Um, the game. Um, the game we were talking about where I found the skirmish problem, which isn't a problem, thankfully. Uh, I was playing Warriors of Chaos. And against uh, Demons of, I think it was mostly Zinch. We played a 3,000 point game and I brought a, I brought a, a Chaos Lord on a Dragon. That's going up in three weeks. Well, yeah, th uh, three weeks tomorrow. No, two weeks tomorrow. Sorry, two weeks tomorrow. Your dragon did nothing that game. You could have had a prince and great eagle with the same results versus Luca. Uh that's actually not true, actually. No, that's not true. There's there's turn one my dragon did nothing. Hopefully you had Rhinox Ogres. I I wouldn't hold your breath on that. They're not gonna add them, unfortunately. Well, I don't know. I guess they could. Kyle, what the fuck, bro? <laughs> the most agonizing thing about seeing... I know, I know, Zoo. I know. Oh, and they, well, my last two bot reports, there's a clip at the beginning. I bought a new camera, and I don't like it. It makes the clips all out of focus. I it takes too long to focus properly. So I gotta get another camera already. Camcorders aren't really designed to do what we do with battle reports, the way we record them, unfortunately. Can you from beneath the sands turn one? I believe the answer is yes. Yeah, I would say yes, unless you can find a reason the answer is no. I've used them in a I've used them in a game. I used those Dragon Princes again yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yeah, it was yesterday. I had a blast with them. I will give no spoilers, but B P O P. Wars need a few things. One is set up as part of the resolute rule. Now it's just a negative. It just makes sense. Wars in the first round of combat set up to fight when their fellows fall. I don't know what you mean by that. But a few armies have negative. Well, orcs and goblins used to have the only army wide negative rule. But now I, th now I think you tried your best to ignore. I tried. I tried every time, but chat was always there to let me know. And I think I think only the dwarves have an army wide negative rule, right? Barbarian from Hero Quest, remember for thirty months. Thank you for supporting me for so goddamn long, brother. Loving the recent videos, especially as I haven't had time to play the old world myself yet. Which which have been your favorite armies to play so far? Dwarves, orcs, and high elves.
yeah, those I've been I've been thinking about that a lot lately. Like, why do I keep wanting to play those armies? I just have I have a lot of fun with them. But like in WAP, I enjoy Beastmen the most because they were overpowered. They were just mindless fun. I would aim at the enemy and just go. I didn't have to think. I didn't have to try. I just roll dice. But I've also painted a lot of high elves, dwarves, and orcs recently, which means that's why. I, that's probably why I actually. I don't know. I, I, you know what? I like what I'm working on currently the most. <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> Yes, I hate, I hate High Elves, Kyle. I hate him so much. <laughs> Tolkien, why do you think like Orcs and Goblins so much? I'm curious. I do love them. I'm curious what you think. I'm curious what you think I do. Hello, Steve. Hope all is well. I do have a question. I've been playing Blizzardwind for a long time and gone back and forth with this, but I do believe they are a little overcosted. Not sure. Uh, yeah, JB. Um, yeah. They appear to be a little overcosted. Not not, not a lot. But if they had a point cost reduction, I don't think anybody would be like, oh, it's not fair. Yeah, Lizardmen seem a little overcosted. Not their skinks, not their monsters, just their source and temple guard. Any expectations on Woodolf Arcane Journal? I'll tell you this. Every time I've made a speculation on what the Arcane Journal stuff could be, I was, I've been wrong. So, no, I have no expectations on Arcane Journal. Tree Spirit Army makes sense, but, like, did it, would you have guessed Bretonians would have... Okay, Air Tree War, you could guess for sure. It's always been our thing. You never would have guessed Exiles. A, a Mortuary Cult? I don't think... I guess you could have guessed that for Tomb Kings. Maybe it's just me who's bad at guessing this. Because I thought for sure we'd get some sort of... I could never have guessed in a million years we'd get Troll Horde and Nomadic Waff, Orcs and Goblins. I thought it'd be a Night Goblin, Squig type thing and maybe a Forest Goblin, Savage Orc type thing. That's what I thought it would be. But I was way off the money on both of those. Is Troll Horde without Orcs and Goblins viable at all? I don't think I'll ever play Troll Horde. You, lo you, you, you lose too much of the good stuff from Orcs and Goblins to gain reroll regen saves against um uh non magical attacks. But I do think the hag adds a lot to regular orcs and goblins. So I'd rather just bring a, a unit of trolls and the hag in my regular orcs and goblins. And uh there's a named character that's not out yet, um that does everything you need the character to do to follow around the uh the the the, the, the trolls. To use his leadership instead of uh, the general's leadership. Yeah, I think you're better off playing. I think the troll horde is not great. But it's fun. <laughs> and it's frustrating. I freaking hate stupidity. <laughs> not sure what points need to be. I would probably drop them about two points per model. Make source warriors uh, 14 points with all the upgrades. And make, um, um, same thing, temple guard 14 points with their loadout. Krom's number one fan over 13 months. Been thinking of getting into the old world. Does Warriors of Chaos have an Eye of the Gods chart? Are they fun to play? Yes. Wait, you're messing with me. Yes and yes. <laughs> uh, especially with the new Marauders coming out for Age of Sigmar. You're going to have an amazing... I Okay, I don't have them here anymore. I just finished painting up a bunch of Warriors of Chaos Age of Sigmar models. I used them in a battle report already. So they fit on the square bases perfectly. They're painted up. They're done. I've used them in a battle report. But uh, you can buy modern beautiful games workshop models and make a Warriors of Chaos army and then roll an Eye of the Gods chart is freaking fun. The Hobby Jerks, if you change a single game rule for Old World to improve the game, what would it be? If I, I know the answer. Thank you for your first ever Super Chat, my dude. I would change it so wizards that are... We looked at talked about this recently. All level 1 and 2 wizards get plus 1 to cast and dispel. All level 3 and 4 wizards get plus 2 to cast and dispel. I'm stealing that rule right from Warhammer Armies Project. It just does it better. And then after that, you have to then reduce the cost of every, the casting value of every spell in the game by two. What that allows you to do, it um, it makes level four wizards functionally 
the same as they are right now. It makes level three wizards, sorry, it makes level one, two, and three wizards functionally better than they are right now. And you'll start seeing every level wizard in the game. I think that change is a massive improvement for the game. And a year from now, two years from now, if we have no hint at in uh, a new edition, we are going to implement that. We are pre-deciding to implement that a year from now on the channel because it just improves magic greatly. Right now, it just it's level four or nothing, and it's kind of lame. But yeah, that's the that's the change I would do in a heartbeat. Yeah, but Kyle, would you rather be um, Vampire Counts or Staven? Don't get me wrong, Skaven, I can't seem to beat. I can beat Vampire Counts, but Skaven get me every time. But my Skaven opponents are cheating a lot too, so there's that. It's not their fault. <laughs> AOS, the best thing that ever happened to the old world is all those amazing malls. <laughs> Careful, cap on. <laughs> no worry, comfortable fan. Yeah, no, uh, Warriors of Chaos are a lot of fun to play. A lot of really cool new models, and the fact that they, they've already shown off the Age of Sigmar Marauder models. Oh, 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 oh. 14 points for a 2 tech T4 unit. Yeah, but like, um, there are other units that are comparable to that in the game, which is not necessarily a good, like, Black, look at Black Orcs, for example. They're only one attack per model, but they do have Furious Charge. And they're 12 points a model. And they have full plate armor. Um, Chosen. Uh, they have their... Chosen are 19 points a model. Never mind. Yeah, maybe they don't need a point cost reduction. They do seem a little high. But they are damn good models, Zoo. So, yeah, like, I, I'm not going to sit here and argue for a point and cost reduction. But, like, I could see them going down one or two points a model. But if they don't, I'll still use them. I like to believe I'm pretty objective. I play every army. I'm not, I'm not trying to argue to make one army better or worse because I like this army. I don't like that army. I, I like to believe I'm pretty objective nowadays because I play. I, I own and play everything. Like I think I think black orcs should probably go up about two points per model. I'm sorry, orc players. Uh, black orcs are a little too cheap for what they do. <laughs> Bacon boys. Oh, I can't wait for the Slayer Army. I, I'm gonna buy so many Doom Seekers. Carl, how's it going, dude? Hello, Steve. How was your Easter Sunday? It's great. I'm gonna back on Warhammer on Sunday. I thought I had a major rule issue and Spoons found an answer for me and I appreciate Spoons. Have a great day, sir. P.S. found it. You promised him something. Oh, that's right. I, I, I'm a, I have bad memory. Have a great day, P.S. I'm looking away to the codex of you. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Um, Carl, I don't think. No, let me rephrase that. I know I can't make a good review. My, I am so out of the loop. And I haven't played 40k in months that I can't do. I can't say anything constructive on 40k right now. I I don't think I would be bringing any positivity to the community reviewing a book if I don't have enough context. Or I just want to pull. Like, I don't. Want, I don't want to talk about my ass because apparently, apparently the uh, competitive scene is loving the book. And I so I I just don't see it. Like, but I'm not playing the game. That's why. I'm I'm just upset that I can't physically use any of my um crisis suits because they all have cyclic ion glued on them. But that's on me for meta chasing. Like I, I'm okay with taking that hit. I chose to do the best of the best thing, and now I'm getting hit for it. And I deserve it. I'm not even making a joke. I actually mean that. I meta chased and puts I glued cyclic ion on everybody. Here's my comeuppance. I put some damning evidence in the High Elf Army list section on Discord. Okay. (laughs) 
Hey, you too. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna play it. Yes, I hate. I hate Hiles, Kyle. I hate him so much. <laughs> yes, I hate. I. Thanks. Thanks. You you understand that some. Let me reply. You understand that somebody's gonna receive that clip and now. Please don't email me. I love high elves. Swordmasters, I fucking hate Swordmasters. Oh, I do. I hate Swordmasters. <laughs> Save them best, yes, yes. Have have any of the Skaven lists you've played been legal? I've always missed one unit of clearance rats per thousand. Yeah, I think I think Skaven have um the most restrictive army comp of anybody to the point where like I, at this point i'm like uh this needs to be loosened up this is too restrictive it's kind of a no i'm not a skaven player it's the one army i don't have i'm like it's kind of lame kind of lame for the skaven players but but i keep losing to them so that's to them <laughs> but skaven and clan rats you like they used to like every edition but eighth edition they had to like have clan rats for everything else so it's just back to the way it used to be oh my god kyle that's right i will hey dr v how's it going brother happy easter to you too i will message luca right now and remind him that we're doing that game today oh does anybody remember what we're supposed to do luca will remember All right, I just reminded him. Hey, Carl, one thing you for using 10 Mountain Miniatures memberships. Super appreciate you guys. Dark Madge Pie, Sidon Zoo. I'm sorry. Swivel. You know what? I'm not going to read any. A Pepsi Man. I can read your name. Christopher Blackburn, Lorenzo Nell. Hurry. I can't read. Come on. Dungus Dingus. You, M Mitch Erickson. Dungus Dingus. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> you call you call thank Carl Boy. Wait, Mitch Erickson? Is, is that Mitch? Is that you? Hey, buddy. What was I saying before I get distracted? Oh, yeah. So, well, does anybody remember what we're supposed to do for... Hey, Frenchie, how's it going, brother? Does anybody remember what we're supposed to do for that stream? Isles versus Dark Elves. There was one more thing we were supposed to do. Either we were, we were both... I think we were both between dragons. Luke will remember. Let's go in Disflux. Can I talk to you guys for a second? Let's take a uh, just a quick break from um, Warhammer to talk to you guys about your screen names, your avatar names. Uh, some of you need to make them better, or at least spell them phonetically for me, because I'm a high school dropout. I can't read. Dragon on Dragon. Gotta make it short, sweet, and simple if you want him to shout it. It's gotta be like spoons. And I would. It's exactly. That's why spoons is spoons. <laughs> and if you can make me giggle a little bit too with your name, even better. But you just gave them a challenge you're going to regret. <laughs> you're going to make the dumbest names now. <laughs> half of them already do. I can't read half of this, but don't no, use the dumb good. names you can read. <laughs> it's going to be like a whole joke in a username. <laughs> Thank you, Dan Brooks. This is what I need. Nuber, you have a good name. It makes me think of. Uh, Baldur's Gate 1. Hiya. Thanks, Gregory. So. Since I have zero belief that we're ever going to pick it back up, I'm just going to rule, since you mentioned Baldur's Gate, 
that justice was brought to everyone. Oh, I forgot all about that. I haven't had a chance to play at all. At all. I I I, I never assumed we were gonna fit. I, I, I considered reaching act two if we ever did. So I know how like almost impossible. <laughs> I have two campaigns on my computer and none of them are gonna get done. I've never finished the game. I I replayed a couple of my saves because they had the epilogue and I wanted to see all the epilogue scenes. I thought quitting my main, my day job would give me more time for this kind of stuff, but it turns out I'm just No. Yeah. Oh you Scott, we're gonna take you the super chat. Stuff. First ever super chat too. I have a 1500 point tournament coming up. Would you be able to review my list, please, and provide me some feedback? Not sure if you're doing that sort of thing today. Absolutely, Scott. Email me right now. Use the email in the description of this video. It's mountainministersgaming at gmail.com. I'll do it right now. And then, Dr. V, does anyone remember what we're here? Oh, wait, trying to think. I know, Dr. V. I'm, I, I am. Look it. I play with toys for a We got through the big debate, so now we're here. <laughs> How do you have time, Dr. V? I can't finish it. One time, let alone 50. No, I beat Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 with every character and subclass at least he once. He said, oh, he said he had finished it. He started it 50 times. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> That's the difference. I have finished nine playthroughs, I think. But what are you talking I also know I'm zero interested in the game because I've, I've, I've done all the things I wanted to you, do. You've done everything? <laughs> I'm just waiting for Silent Hill 2 remake to come out, and I'm just it's driving me nanners. It's taking so long. Like, Merry Easter to you, Tislux. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like lame. It's just lame. Like, there's ads in your email inbox now. Like, like not not yeah, email right, ads, yeah. but like ads in the email app. Yeah, like at the top of the screen. Yeah. Okay, uh, which... I know a lot of people that have started paying for YouTube Premium because ads in the last, I'd say, 90 days have gotten that egregious. I know I've started watching longer form content just so that I can counter less ads. <laughs> like I'm listening through this uh, green text RPG recap of an all guardsman party that ends up in draft of the Inquisition. Let me tell you. It's pretty good. I, one of them is my spirit animal. A twitchy guy that blames orcs for everything and he just booby traps everywhere he goes. Same thing, Dr. V. I can't stand YouTube ads. Even though, please don't put your ad blocker on it. I need that money. Uh, what should we only do you first? Know, there's been like three this stream already. Was it really? I I don't control it. I have no control over it. I I say yes ads because I need to get paid. Uh, which one would you first, Scott? There's three in here. I have a I have Warriors, Wars of the Dragon, and Woodies. I assume the most recent. I have played the Woodles in the non Dragon list. We want to try the Dragon list this week. Okay, let's do the Dragon list. No, it, at Ice Wolf. It's um no. I as a guy who works on the internet. I don't believe in ad blockers. You're literally taking the food out of somebody's mouth if you use an ad blocker. Um, <laughs> but no, like it's a talking about when I open up my Windows email app, there's there's always an ad in the top banner. I'm like, like what, what's going on here? <laughs> okay, so we have 600 points on a Sorcerer Lord on a 1,500-point game. This is a 1,500-point tournament. Yeah, I like your Marauders. And your hand weapons. Corn! If you're going to go corn, I would recommend additional hand weapons or halberds instead. Or even great weapons, but assuming you don't have them modeled that way, because none of us do. But uh, not terrible here. It's a small point game. But you're playing a 1500 point game with a dragon. If the tournament's going to allow that, like, this is the best of the three lists. Don't go in the way the other ones is the best of the three lists. Because dragons are just so dominating in this game. So, you're level four. We're on that dragon. We're using battle magic. All these things I rec uh, recommend. Armor, silver, steel, and crown of everlasting conquest, eh? So, you have uh, three up, five up. I don't think 40 points for a plus one armor save is worth points.
because the dragon itself has um full plate so you can use that four up armor save if you're paying 40 points for plus one armor save i'd save those points and then you want to make this guy nuts Ooh, i just heard michael keaton in my head say let's get nuts right there or familiar this is dirty. I hate this list. Still got points to spend. How many points do we have to spend in this list? We have 10 points available. Um, nothing to spend it on. Oh, favor of the gods. Boom. Two of these. Spell familiar would be better, but you can't find you can't afford it. Can we get you a spell familiar? Oh, we definitely can. This guy's got the banner of rage. First of all, no, he doesn't. Second of all, he's joining these guys. They get the banner of rage. And then now they don't have to spend points on Mark of Corn. We just saved all kinds of points here. Mark of Cats and Divided. We got the exact same outcome, and we saved a bunch of points. Now we can go back up here. Oh, God. I'm sorry to everybody has to play against this. We can fix this right, right here. This is the case that you're bad and you should feel bad. This is the case that you're bad and you should feel bad. Now you have that fifth dispel. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We don't need these we could still buy one Drew it I'll take one we can buy two more we can buy two more I don't think you need to buy two more sure we don't have to spend the points on well, actually no let's see what this guy can get Fix this guy up a little bit. Uh, what's we got here? Rebel Center Bear. You know what? We got the points. We're going to make this work. We're going to give him a war banner. Because those guys are going to be in combat. We have to find a couple of points here. You don't need the Ruby Ring or Rune on this list. This is going to become a shield. And we still got points to spend. Leave that alone. Do you have any, do you have any more Marauders? Do you have any more models to throw around here at all? You can, with the remaining 25 points, just throw more bodies elsewhere. 10 Warhounds. Well, Warhounds, let me give you actually a tip. Spread them out. Uh, actually, there's no like restriction on your warhounds you can take, right? Let me double check that. Remember, there's still dice, and your opponents will have cheesy list too. By no means this is an auto win, but this is a uh, this is a damn good list to play with. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you're good. Oh, max three. One, two, three. We got five in here? All right. Well, keep them at fives. I don't think I could ever argue bringing uh, Warhounds to squads at 10. They just cause panic. 75 points disposal. Well, we can make it 100 points by dropping this banner. But then, you know what? If we're at this state, well, the, the Doom Totem is really good, but 
You're going to run into combat. So let's just make this guy more defensive. Uh, magic items. We'll have armor, sword, steel. This hand weapon becomes a great weapon. Uh, we got still lots of points to play with. Lots of points to play with. Do you have any Marauder Horsemen? Let me know what else. Let me know what else. Uh, what other models do you have to work with? Look at a chat for a second. I need to get Discord audio going for one of these streams. Yes, Dr. V, you're welcome anytime to come on your channel and chat with us. That was a Batman one first, I know. I want to rewatch the first Batman movie. I was, it came out 89, right? I was eight years old when it came out. Cannons and Boltors. I like Boltors more than I like cannons, but cannons are damn good. Thank you for the guy for Dr. V. I like it with, with him and the little guy with the beard play. <laughs> Is Luke and the little guy with the beard? Gregory, are you, you close? Have, you have to tell Luca that. I can't wait to tell. So every member on Wednesday to tell Luca about him and the look out of the beard. <laughs> it's like, look at the season squirrel walk. I love him. I'm not killing it. Think of the super chat, my dude. Happy Easter. Don't work hard. I, I never do. <laughs> okay, we got more marauders to play with. So we're going to make this a 21 man squad. Seven by three. Uh. We'll drop the shields. Ah, we'll leave the shields on. Where am I going to get those points? Oh, well. It's a 20 man squad. Nothing we can do. Hey, and we can afford a musician. There you go. 15, sorry, fourteen ninety nine. It's a list that. You kind of a douchebag for bringing it to you. like if they're if they're holding a fifteen hundred point tournament and saying dragons are allowed, fine, go nuts. You know, there's one thing that would make this list even better. Ah, I can't click on it. Why? No, I'm not gonna do that. You buy the uh, the Monster Slayer Sword. But no, this guy's going to move around and do other things until he has to get into combat. Yeah, this, this is gross. You're gross. <laughs> Everything about this tournament is gross. Oregon's too damn far. That's literally the other side of the continent. <laughs> you know what's funny, Kyle? I think, I think mm -hmm. the Batman movie in 1989 was the last time I was ever in a drive-in theater. I remember which came out first, Batman or Beetlejuice? There's only only there's three. Wow, this is weird. All three movies I ever remember seeing in movie theater was with. Uh, no, sorry, it was a different movie. I was gonna say Michael Keaton was in all three, but he wasn't. So it was Beetlejuice, um, Batman, and there was another one. Well, it was a weird home renovation thing in the eighties. But yeah, I don't like driving theater. I don't know why. I'm 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 derailing. I'm talking about other things. Ignore me, Steve. I made this list for you. You like your horrible person. I I think I think fifteen hundred point tournaments that allow dragons are are trash, are are cancer. And this is a this is a a cancer on the community. Are they literally allowing dragons? And if I don't think dragons should be allowed in a two thousand point tournament. Yeah, it was Money Pit, Kyle. Actually, it was. It was Money Pit. That was with, um... the Tom Hanks? 
Yeah, it was my. How are you the same age as me? Did we watch the same movies when we were like really young kids? <laughs> the big guy with the beard is getting really off topic. Fair, fair. <laughs> Thanks so much, Steve. Would you check what else? Oh yes, absolutely. Sorry, you could have just you didn't have to super chat that. I do appreciate it. But you didn't have to do that. You gotta remind me. I get distracted easy. Uh, what is? Oh, I hate this already. I don't like treatment agents. I don't know why. But at 15 points, it kind of works. So we have a level three wizard. Uh, if we can find 30 points, we're going to buy that. Battle magic makes sense. Spites, yeah, you don't need. There is one spite. We could, we might buy this if we have the points, but, um, I don't think this guy. Weapon skill five initially zero. So what? So there's a the the befallment the befallment of mischief is pretty good. If he has to engage weapon skill three things, it means the weapon skill three things hit him on fives. But at the same time, you don't really want this guy engaging in combat. This is why I have a weird thing about treatment ancients. You like wizards on dragons? You don't want you, you don't want them in combat. We get a lot of points spent on combat stats. But the dragon has the ability to get to where you need it to be. The, the, the treatment ancient doesn't necessarily. That's true, Dr. V. That's true. But yeah, you definitely can make this guy work. But these are two upgrades I want to buy if I can. Um, Blade Lord. Arcane Botkins. We got the bow. He's on a Warhawk. Uh, yeah, this all makes sense. I don't think. Wait a second. Can you do this? I never considered you mix the arrows with the bows, but I guess why couldn't you? That's a good combo. That's a damn good combo. Glade Captain. You love the Bodkins. Ha! What's he on? He's on a war hot. Ten Glade Guard. Love that. Deep Wood Scouts. Um uh, I personally prefer True Flight. Because I I'm, my scouts need to move constantly. But there is an argument for Arcane. And Hagbang. Like there's an argument for all of them for Moonfire, really. So yeah, I, I just more of a personal preference thing. Uh Drys are I'm really loving. And Glade Riders. You got the reserve move. See, these guys here, I would definitely take um, True Flight. He has so few shots. Uh, you can jump, shoot, jump with them. Can't see the screen. What happened? Oh, I hit them. Thank you, Dr. E. You didn't have to. I hit the button. Um, Sorry. Uh, Glade Riders. Yeah, I, I prefer True Flight over Hagbane. Uh, because. They're gonna. These guys are always moving. Uh, straight through the wound is it's just it's it's normal in the game. It's just normal. Shut, shut up, Kyle. I know how to work the internet. But I, I want to go back to this for a second. Like, just a glade, a hundred and fifty point character on a war hawk and a dragon slayer sword. This is the ultimate psychological pick. In fact, if even though th I don't think you need this, I would always have this in my competitive list just to like, hey, just remember this guy here, he flies like 10 and he's got that Dragon Slayer sword. And it's me rolling, so I'm going to get that six. Two Treakin and 10 more scouts. Yeah, no, this is... Where can we get you points? Like, we really can't. There's nothing I want to cut. Yeah, you know, you're good. I wouldn't change a thing on this one. Max, a little bit of both. A little bit of both, brother. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't change a thing on this one. If 
if I had 60 more points, it would be level four and it would be uh, be followed by a mischief to get that. I'd have to cut these down to a five man squad, which I've done and it's not terrible. So if you're gonna have time to practice, you can try practicing with a five man squad here and then buying the level four and the uh oh you can't you're gonna go over on points you can't never mind you're good don't touch it i love it i don't hate it as much as your warriors of chaos list but oh wait this is over came for both but we can't get we cannot get that but i bet you we can drop I get rid of the Bodkins. There, there is an option you can do. Hobby Jerks, welcome on yours, but appreciate that. So yeah, you can drop your Dryads. You can lose four Dryads. Lose your Arcane Bodkin on the Psychological Pick anyway. And then you can make him a level four and have the minus one to hit. And, sorry, minus one web skill initiative. But again, you don't need all that. You can go back to having this a 10-man squad, put those upgrades back up, and you're good. Let me know how it goes. When, when's the event? Oh, three weeks? Nice. Are War Dancers viable? War Dancers are probably one of the best units in the entire game. Actually, we can look them over here. Uh, this one. Uh, so skirmish is kind of busted. Skirmish is skirmish is too good, unless you had charged it on multiple sides. Yeah, we got sixteen points a model for weapon skill six and initiative six. A uh, five-inch move model, which is all great. The, everything's great there. But we got strikes first. You're going to have two hand weapons, two attacks per model. Always striking first. Furious charge, so three attacks a model when they charge. Um, six of ward safe, who cares? But they can either have AP2, additional attack for fighting hordes, a four of ward save, or a minus one hit. Tyler, oh, thank you for the super chat. Hey, Steve, what would... What would a good mix of War Machines be for a new Dwarf player trying to plan for the new release? Yes. Oh, wait. Dr. V, work is calling. Kitchen Extreme. See you Wednesday, dude. Have fun at work. See you work all the time. How do you have time to put all this data ever? Appreciate you, little brother. Uh, Tyler, my favorite War Machine. Okay. I don't think there's a bad War Machine. Um, People are hating on the... I'm going to go pull them up people are hating on the organ gun which i don't think it's as bad as people claim but if it's it's not the first one you need where's your very top right i really really love the uh bolt thrower a lot uh i really love the fire thrower so those are the fire thrower and the bolt thrower are my two um starting picks I don't... Where are the freaking war machines? There we go. Uh, okay, so both door, uh, 55 points. You don't have to buy nothing for it. You can buy a rune of penetration. I think the rune of penetration is 20 points. Uh, makes them strength 7 and ignores armor save. Uh, I I buy two of those and one of them has to have an extra rune for the, 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 the runes rules. So both throwers I love to death. Uh, fire throwers are really good defensively. If they're coming at you, they're going to keep roasting the enemy. And then uh, grudge throwers are stone throwers that just if you gotta you gotta kill a monster, that's how you gonna kill a monster. They're still they're still D three plus one damage. The dwarf cannon is only D three damage. So unless a rune comes out in the arcane journal that gives cannons an extra damage, D three plus one, um, I I would stick with the grudge thrower. Uh, cannons are still laser accurate though, so. I, I, I don't think, well, that's the thing. I, I suppose kind of saying it. The, the troll hammer torpedo is just a short range cannon. 
It just the Trollhammer torpedoes are so good, but I'm not going to consider it a war machine, but it, it does the same job. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just, I think I like every dwarf war machine. If I could only have a couple, it'd be two bolt throwers and, and a fire thrower. And then after that, I would add a grudge thrower unless the cannon got extra damage room. But that's, again, that's also my play style. But I freaking love, um, the one thing I want to pin down is my enemy cav when i'm playing dwarves i don't want them charging me with their lances and um even if you have a two of armor save the runa skewering i think it's called wow okay 20 points plus one makes them strength seven which means you wound monsters on every monster in the game pretty much on a three instead of a four uh no armor saves permitted uh you Oh, but you can take ward and regeneration. Um, and then, um, yeah, plus one strength. No armor save. It's worth 20 points all day long. Do you think the fact that, this is off topic, but do you think the fact that everywhere it talks about armor saves, it always specifically says, but uh, you can take regen or whatever, means like the intent for Plague of Rust is to turn off ward and regen as well? Well, we had that debate already. I mean, maybe the intent. Well, I thought the intent was no, but I'm starting to believe the intent might be yes. Yeah. I mean, maybe. We just said we know how it is rules is written, but rules is written, uh, best spell in the game. Yeah. Just about. Yeah. I don't think cannons are bad. I don't think cannons are bad at all, Cash. I just feel bad that they have the, the dwarves the best craftsman in the old world, they have the cannon, the one cannon that's only D3 damage on D3 plus one. Is that cannon cheaper than the other ones, though? Yeah, yeah it is cheaper, but... Yeah. That's not bad, Tall Cash. Hitting on fours and fives, or fives and fours isn't that bad. No, 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 not rules as written. I meant... Sorry, I'm not talking about rules as written, Tallcash. I'm talking rules as intended. I was in the boat of they don't intend it to affect a regen and ward. But then everywhere else we talk about affecting armor saves, they specifically leave out those, and that spell didn't. So now I'm starting to believe they specifically intend for it to work. Because I was in the camp war of they don't intend playing a rust to work against ward and regen. But now I'm in the camp of, oh, they intend for it to do that. Clan Stackhouse. Wish I could stay watch stream, but I took... Wait, it's time to cook lamb... I can't sp say that. Sp Spaducci? Take care and happy Easter for fellow Italian Canadian. With my with my red beard... Oh, well, I guess my beard is kind of gray now, but with my red beard, I, I know I look Italian Canadian. You relatively local? Yeah, one of them Toronto Italians, are you? <laughs> no, they're worse. <laughs> they're from Quebec. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're they're French Italian Canadians. <laughs> Don't get me started. You're gonna get me banned, bro. <laughs> Can Troy ever torpedo shoot grape shot? It's a torpedo, not a cannon. Is that dwarf cannons are bad or dwarf cannons are bad like Hal's red? No, they're not bad. I just I'm I'm upset for them. They are cheaper. I would rather have the option. To pay points to be clear, you know what? I'm not clarifying this. I don't care. Cannons are dwarf cannons are bad. We need to believe. We need to believe that was a mistake. <laughs> I love the way you put that. We need to believe. I don't know. Actually, that was that that was that I thought it was um, an oversight. I'm starting to believe otherwise now. Because everywhere else we talk about uh, armor saves in the rule book and the army books, everywhere else. It's like, hey, no armor saves allowed. But you can take ward and regeneration. The time and time and tell, uh, over and over tell us that when we're talking about armor saves and you get none of it, you can take these ones. And we have to specifically tell you you can take these ones because these are also armor saves. I'm telling you, they no, I'm, I'm firm on the boat now. They intend for play of rust to work against ward and regen. Yeah, and I mean, the armor value part of the wording is... It's clear as day. There's no, you know, we didn't have to hunt multiple pages to find that. It was right there. <laughs> oh, 
Plant stack has remember two months of Rock Jack, born and work in Toronto, living in Saga. Oh, you are one of them Toronto Italians. Let me tell all the internet about the Toronto Italians. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> Vito is a Toronto Italian. <laughs> Plan to pick on the, the Toronto Italian. I can't even remember the last battle report I saw with Vito. <laughs> years, Rose. Years. So long. Uh... There's a hundred part rune to make the dwarf can do two to three damage. Is that really a thing? Why are you gonna lie to me, man? I I actually might use that if it existed. Oh, it's called a second cannon. Oh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, <laughs> Kyle. Pretty good. You got me. I can no longer argue. You got me. <laughs> right, let's look at this warriors list. We have thirty two points to play with. We have a sorcerer. Uh, Charm Shield, Battle Magic. Uh, what are you doing on this list? Okay, this guy's walking around doing damage. Uh, we got points to spend, right? My dude, I can fix this list so quick. Watch this. Boom, list is fixed. This list is now a billion times better. And you had the points for it. I have to change nothing. Always bring that lore familiar. I know, I know, I know. I, so, I hate that. That's a thing. Nico, you're basically one of them Toronto Italians as well, okay? <laughs> There's another category. Black Horror for just says it takes... I'll look at that in a second, Nico. Uh, okay, we got a Chaos Lord. What's this guy doing? Uh, he's mounted. Dragon Slave Sword! Yeah, I get you. I get you. Banner of Rage. We gotta, we gotta move this banner. Never put your banners on... Never put a magic banner on your BSB if the unit he's gonna join can also take the banner. The BSB can be targeted out and killed and you can lose the banner. Whereas the banner and the unit because he's deaf, he's on foot, right? Oh uh, yeah, he's on foot. So I know he's joining this unit. This unit pays for the banner. This banner can't be killed. So when, that's that's the tip for all armies. If you're gonna bring close enough, Nico. <laughs> if you're gonna bring um, a magical banner, never put it on the BSB unless the unit he's gonna join can't afford it. And if you're gonna have um, a magic banner on the BSB and on the unit. The most important one to keep alive goes on the unit if the unit can't afford to pay for it. Because your aspiring champion get challenged out, killed, died, spelled out. You can lose the magic banner. But the one in the unit, it's going to last there all the way to the end. Um, Chaos Warriors, we got corn and we're going fighting. Marauders, same, same thing. We know what we're doing here. Oh, we do have Marauder Horsemen. I love Javelins. Oh, do we have any points? We have no points. If we can find some points, we're going to buy you spears or flails as well. Probably flails. Because you may never charge these guys in. we got to find you nine points. Oh, can you throwing spears and flails? Where is that? That's an option, right? There it is. We're going to find, we're going to find seven points. Warhounds. Oh, right here. I never just don't take them in tens. What will end up happening is um, somebody will one shot a five man unit of hounds and you'll take panic checks, whatever. But what happens more often than not, they kill one or two or three or four uh, and not the last one. And then when the last one dies, it's not causing panic checks. So you're usually better off with multiple units than a unit of 10. I found that out from actual personal play experience to separate them. You love your spawn. I don't mind them at all. Actually, they're pretty good. Uh, the Marauders. Nothing to touch here. I got to find you 12 points. We can do that. Wait, 12 points? Where do we get 12 points? Right. This is why. Um, Because the Vanguard, you're paying for it twice now. That's okay. We can live with that. We can live with that. We can shave probably. I 
I don't think you need this. You have toughness four. You're pretty good. Now we have more points to spend. I would uh I'd beef out one of these. How far can we go with these guys? Marauders are just so good. We can take him to 17. There we go. You know, I go six wide, six, six, five. There you go. It's a good list. It's not as good as the other one. Because of the dragon. <laughs> they should not Guelph Battalion. It's the same thing, Nico. <laughs> No, caveman, it doesn't matter. Some of the models are holding the spear like they're throwing it. Some most of them are holding it upright. Uh you can no, it, it doesn't matter. You just say what kind of spears they are. The, the, the thing is, I don't think can anybody make a case for throwing spears? I just I can, I can never make a case for it. Take the poison off the warhounds. Um, I don't. You could. You could. If you want to keep the uh, splendor on the spiring champion, you could do that. That gives you uh, exactly enough points you needed. Yeah, I know. I know, Kyle. I know. It, I know it affects the unit, but the unit is T four with a for a bomber save as it is. They're not a good target to get shot at anyway. They're not going to get shot at. The marauders all shooting will end up at the the warhound screen them. Uh, all shooting that gets past the Warhounds is going to end up in the Marauders and the Marauder Horsemen anyway. Like, that unit is not getting shot at. And in fact, if the Chaos Warhounds are getting... Sorry, if the Chaos Warriors are getting shot at, aces. I don't... I, I'd rather you shoot at my Warriors than my Marauders. So I don't want to incentivize you to do the thing I'd rather you not do. Or rather you... You know what I mean? Yeah, you got it. What would you look for in a unit if you need to deal with a dragon? The, both, the only thing that can deal with dragons reliably is anybody with Monster Slayer or another dragon. Is there a unit in the game I'd put up against a dragon? Grail Knights, because Hammerers, uh, Temple Guard, because they can challenge them out indefinitely. But eventually they're gonna they're gonna lose, so that's kind of not great. There's no unit, like, is there a unit in the game where I would put no champion, so I couldn't be, I, my champion couldn't get challenged out, and fight a dragon with it? Maybe, maybe, maybe Chaos Chosen with Great Weapons. No. No, even they're going to die to the man before they swing. There isn't a unit in the game that can fight a dragon, straight up. There is dice. Ten blood knights. Oh, yeah, ten blood knights. They're going to swing first. They're strong. They, they're going to wound it on threes on the charge. Yeah, you're right, blood knights. That's true. I forgot. Blood knights could do it. Blood Knights are two text pieces, no frenzy anymore, right? So they pretty much have to roll perfectly. Or the dra every dragon is going to survive, right? Gorvin Slayers? I don't know, man. I don't think so. Fanatics, yes. Max is right. Fanatics, I would. Oh, what's the Skaven Sword? No, there, there are plenty of characters that I'd put up against the dragon. And other monsters. There are monsters and characters. Like a Beastman Gorgon, all day long I'll throw out a dragon. But a unit in the game? Probably just Blood Knights. Infantry? I can't think of an infantry, infantry unit I put. Okay, Fellblade, Strength 10, Multiple Wounds D3. Yeah, this would be fun. No Warder Generation? Yeah! Uh, Skaven! Oh, it, it doesn't need to get killed in a single turn. But uh, a, any unit that doesn't kill it in a single turn is going to get crushed by the dragon. 
So, like, Blood Knights can charge in and do a bunch of damage and then die to the man. Or even Weeping Blade? What's the Weeping Blade? Uh, it's only really strength four, though, so you wouldn't drain it on sixes. Which is poison. No, that, that Fell Blade is really good. Ben, that's actually not true. Mathematically, Wildwood Rangers do next to nothing to dragons. They wouldn't want fives. And they're not fast enough. The uh, dragons, you know, Wildwood Rangers cannot fight dragons. Well, let me rephrase that. They can't successfully fight a dragon. They can engage one. They're not going to do any damage to it. Unfortunately, they're too slow and they're too weak. They're only strength five. What do you mean, Nemo? What's what are you what are you talking about? Oh, Grail Knights. Yeah, well, Grail Knights same as Chosen uh, Chosen Knights, um, Grail Knights, and Blood Knights can all do it. They all have enough attacks to do it. But then the Grail Knights are gonna basically the the dragon will challenge every turn, win the combat by about five, and hope to and just force checks until the unit fails, runs away. Like the Grail Knights can hold up a dragon. They can't. Kill the dragon. In fact, like the, the fact that Grill Knights can challenge indefinitely um is often seen bad for the dragon. I think it's bad for the Grill Knights. Hellblade and Illusion Grace Seer with the assailment spell. You gotta you gotta get that spell though. You gotta get that spell. What do ogres do against the dragon? Uh, stone horns. Uh, they you take uh, you take um, what are they called? Ogre tyrants. Throw them on a stone horn and start grinding. Um, either either character can win that fight. See the 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 characters on big monsters that you uh, have an edge on the character on big monster fight usually have either the monster slaying sword. That's not gonna. That, that's equal for both. But the the uh, other option that is more commonly seen are the ogre and giant blades, which do multiple damage, and the stone horn gets a bit of an edge on that because he has a built in minus one damage. Yeah, but that's not the. That wasn't the conversation, Nemo. Right? We're talking about what what's gonna go fight a dragon, and successfully means to kill it. The dragon, if the dragon doesn't want to engage the Grail Knights, he's probably not going to engage the Grail Knights until he wants to. And then the Grail Knights, by the end of the game, have a significantly higher chance of being dead than the dragon. Significantly. So one side's going to gain a bunch of points and probably lose the game because of it. And one side's going to save a bunch of points and probably win the game because of it. But even if they don't, even if they don't, uh, Kyle, it's um, the dragon's gonna wound them on twos, and they're gonna have uh, five of five up, and they're gonna go down. I don't think there's a reasonable unit in the game that can fight a dragon. Like, of course, there are dice. We've all, of course, you can take a, a unit of goblins could fight a dragon and kill it. Absolutely could happen. We're talking like, like if you're if you're betting here, we know where things are going. We need more counters of dragons. Well, I think maybe Tolkash. I think the the actual the answer for this is dragons is to be more expensive because it's easier to adjust them with points than add more. Uh, Sphinx is a good one too. Talkers are good. Sphinx is a good one, yeah. Uh, but like, there's not units in the game that I would hope against dragons. There's plenty of monsters and plenty of characters that I think I can do it. Steve, do you ever end up playing a game with throwing spears instead of thrusting spears? No, because every time I try to do it, like I can't justify it. I can just I can. I've played enough games to know, even though there is plenty of charging in the game, um, especially with orcs. We're talking about we're talking about orcs, right, Asher? Uh, especially with a unit like that, um, they're gonna do. They're gonna take more. I th they're gonna go into prolonged combat. Like to make thrusting spears work, you have to 
your opponent has to fall back in good order, or you have to restrain and go back in. It, when, when the most common thing happens is um, uh, fall back in good order. Uh, sorry, uh, give ground, which you're going to get better use out of thrusting spears over throwing spears. And even if they fall back in good order, where you could use your thrusting spears, you definitely could also use your, sorry, your throwing spears. You could still use your thrusting spears. You know what? All this to say, the thrusting spears you get way more use out of. In fact, thrusting spears, spears, regular spears, thrusting spears, are criminally under cost of this edition. They are too good of a weapon. I think every spear in the game should go up one point just to make halberds and hand weapons even slightly worth looking at. In fact, spears across the board for everybody should go up two points a model. Sounds like Plague Rust might be counter to dragons. It takes uh, if one takes. In I don't think. I don't think that would make that big a deal, Kyle. I just don't think that would make that big a deal. I think it. I, th I think it, that currently works and isn't that big a deal. You don't think armor? Well, that's a talk tax. That's a fundamental rewrite of the rules, but. Even if you did that, I don't think that's a big enough uh, change. Actually, you know, it makes War Machines even better at killing monsters, and I don't, know if, I don't know if we want that, but maybe we do. I don't know. What does the Nash Wars Camps look like? If you want, feel free to make me a list. So, Frenchie, here's the thing. Um, I have my opinion at one point for this game was, for Warriors of Chaos, this is what I said in the past. The, the most powerful mark is Slanesh. The one that's going to get used the most is Nurgle, and I'm going to use Mark of, Mark of uh, Undivided the most. I was wrong. I think I'm wrong about two or three of those. I actually think Mark of Undivided is the most powerful, not the Mark of Slanesh. And I thought Mark of Nurgle was going to be the most used. It's actually not ever using Mark of Corn. So <laughs> the only time I really want Mark of Slanesh is on. Um, Forsaken. Because then the game swift stride. Yeah, Gregory, that's true. Uh flagellants are what are they like 300 points? So if you have equal points of flagellants to a dragon, they're gonna hold that dragon down indefinitely. But the dragon will always have the speed to stay away from that unit. I can't figure out what magic I want my troll hag. Um, I think I think your orc, I think the talisman of protection is a must. I think it's a must, must, must. I think you're spending thirty points on that and you only have twenty points left over. I don't think any of the weapons are worth it on him at Alder Orc. I think you're always going to want to roll on the random chart. So 20 points left over, you can probably get yourself a power scroll or a dispel scroll. Yeah, Tokish, I do agree with you there. Um, a fundamental, like, I talked earlier about, like, what's the one thing I would change to be the magic thing? But I do think there are too many points allowed for characters in this game. I, I, I would personally would like to tone down the hero hammery part of the game, but I know there are plenty of people who like that the most. So I'm not going to say, hey, the game needs to have it. But uh, yeah, I personally would prefer less characters in the game. But not everybody agrees with me on that, and I'm not going to I'm not going to campaign for changing it just to fit my playstyle. Do you think the new dwarf book will have units of slayers with the monster slayer special rule? Kind of makes sense. No way. No. That would be too good. I don't think they'll do that. War machines were nerfed. No need to give ward regen to a freaking dragon. Um. No, no, I don't agree, because. In 8th edition, uh, monsters were completely 100% of the game. They were useless. Now they have some saves. 
they're like and Cannon's outside of the monster thing were way, way too good at D6. D3 plus 1 is way better. I, I disagree with everything about that, except the dwarves only having a D3 damage cannon. I think had they have a D3 plus 1 cannon, I think it all kind of makes sense. Like, a couple of cannons can still drop a... Uh, like, it. as much as these dragons need to be addressed and toned down, a couple of cannons can drop them in one turn. And that's also not good. It's not good that you can sit back and kill a 600 point character in one volley that's not a good thing either and that can still happen there's like two just like two dragons in the game with 10 wounds the rest have what nine eight or nine so i guess i guess two cannons can't do it in one volley but there's plenty of shooting but like every dragon can be killed with by war machines right now before they get into combat there's there's a happy there has to be a, a a happy medium and War Machines are still damn good at tearing on infantry and doing other throbs. But again, I'm with you. Dragons are not. Yeah, to, so yeah, Tokus, yeah, you you charge round two now, but I mean there's 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 gameplay. I don't think um If you're getting charged turn two by a dragon, one of you's played badly. But I can't just use that as my excuse to refute you. I, I I didn't I didn't say anything there. I just can't see. Turn two dragon charges you. Uh, you you fall back in order or give ground. You flank the dragon. You have a decent chance of pushing him back, and he has no support. Because he charged you too early. It's 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 when dragons are patient is when they're a problem. When your opponent wants to beeline you with a monster. It's in my experience. I'll say I'll I'll caveat this. In my experience, if my opponent wants to beeline a monster at me, they threw it away. It's garbage. They, they threw it to death. If they're patient, and it all comes at you once, the the monster's what gets you. I think I think using your dragon poorly is being overly aggressive with it. I, I think the problem is people feel like spending 500 points on Kansas is dirty pool, but spending 500 points on Dragon Rider is fine. Yeah, see, I don't, I don't like either of them. Uh, but some people think, yeah, you're right. Some people think it's fine to spend five hundred points on a dragon, but bringing that many cans is wrong. And some people think bringing that many cans or war machines is okay, and spending that many points on dragons. That to me, all that's wrong for me. <laughs> Which one of us is right? Not, not none of us. <laughs> Rock lovers of the way forward and rattling guns, true. That's the thing, too. Um, so he, here's here's the thing about wargaming that most of you will already have experienced or understand by now. Um, wargaming communities, whether it's Warhammer, 40k, Warmer Fantasy, Age of Sigma, any of these game systems, um, people are the, the the greater community is biased against shooting. There's a there's a large contingent of players that hate their opponent bringing any shooting. All they want to do, and this is not meant to be insulting, but there are a bunch of people that all they want to do is run forward at you, engage in combat. These people tend to think dragons are fine and war machines are OP. Uh, they are just as much of a problem, as, in my opinion, as the people who think it's fine to make a gun line sit in a back line and complain that, oh, I got charged. You got through all my guns. They're, they're, they're two sides of the same coin for me. That's why I think they both get toned down. But... If you invest as long some point... as they're not making a prominent appearance in tournaments, I don't think they're necessarily turned down. I th think they are. More play styles, it's more people. I think the I, I suspect the R, but if, yeah, if they're, if they're causing an issue at tournaments, that's when you address it. I feel. If you invest in six hundred points in the list for a strong monster, you have to accept the risk of it. Yeah, it's true. I agree, Silo. Oh, I'm already seeing um, a bunch of people complaining about the monster slayer sword even existing. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like it's fifty points and it's very situational. It's literally the armored ceremony of Warhammer Fantasy.
Yep, Christopher, I agree. Dragons are fantastic at that. Yeah. I keep wondering if dragons should have, like, seven wounds at most. Yeah, see, I thought that too, Max, but the problem... The problem is war machines again. Even at seven wounds, infantry struggles against them. But at seven wounds, cannons can drop two cannons can drop in one turn. And we as much as I I want here's what here's what I want to see. In I have no way of making this happen, obviously. I want to see dragons on the table, but I want both players to have I want to see one side bring a dragon and one side not to bring a dragon, and both players have fun in that game. And I feel like that can only the other guy can only do that if he has war machines or another dragon. If he has another dragon, okay, they can brawl. If you have war machines, one of these players is going to have a bad time. <laughs> no, we're not doing that flamble hero, but we can if you want. <laughs> How's it going, buddy? <laughs> Everyone does need to get a good drew. He finally <laughs> showed up. How about that? Uh, you want to you tell flamble hero about skirmishing? I, I, I don't know. Do you want to try explaining it? <laughs> We had a problem, but we found an answer to the flamble hero. <laughs> well, so it was page 184 and 186, yep. right? Yep. What so we, we realized, flamble hero, that if you got a line of skirmishers and you charge their two far flanks, their left and right, be, with the rules on page 186 and on 184, they have to move towards trying to make base contact, which then splits the group and then the controller has to pick which half disappears for losing coherence. <laughs> yeah, I had, a, I, had a, I had a game with Mitch. I'm like, man, I just multi charged skirmishers, and they only have one art technically rules as written. How do I how do I move these malls, and which ones do they which ones do they line up on? So when, if you were to line up the rules as written, I would have split them into two separate units. I'm like that can't be right. Turns out that is right. Half of them have to die. Unless the the frontage of whatever charged you is small enough to where your fighting rank is like three models, yes, and you can bury back to where you're within an inch of and staying with your hairs, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but he had he had literally nine screamers and I in a line, and I gauged both of the far air quotes flanks. We're like, what the hell? With, with, was it with chariots or what was it? One side had a chaos chariot. One side had a unit of chaos warriors. Okay, so I mean, you guys would have had to line them up with a. Uh... Three. Well, I don't know about the base size. It might. Yeah, it would have been three on the chariot, and then see if you could daisy chain them back. To me. Uh, wasn't no. I was as a game with Mitch. I didn't know. Did tell Darren have this problem? No, I was playing. It was a handheld game. I recorded on Friday with Mitch. Oh Scott, brother, take the dragon list. Dragons are just for No, uh <laughs> RX NX. We, we 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 spent a long time going over the rules. Both charges happen simultaneously because they're in the same arc. Yeah. Which which so, so they tough. both make contact at the same time. <laughs> so we we found a rules of written way to handle it. Is it what they intend? I doubt it. I have no idea. I highly doubt but it. I have a rules as written way to handle like like this is how you handle it. And and to be fair, it does heavily nerf skirmishers, which is probably a good thing for the game. They need an update. Skirmisher. They need an update the whole rule book, Gregory. Because <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you charge one of those flanks with anything but a chariot, or like a giant, or single character, but a single model unit. Um, you're losing somebody to coherence. <laughs> yeah, similar issue. Overran the far right side of skirmishers, and they were like ten wide. Man, I know. Oh, no, yeah, tape the whole thing out. Oh, okay, you're redacting. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I still love the addiction. I still love the addiction. I will. I God, I can't wait to. <laughs> I was just happy we had a clear as day rule this written answer. I tell you, I, if, if you spend enough time in the book, you can get there, which is insane because I thought finally we found one where we couldn't. It was like an hour and a half 
for that. I mean, there were some you know, distractions in there. Well, I, I came into this one being like, look, guys, this one I don't have an answer for. I'm not sure how we're going to handle this one. Um, well, how are you guys handling it? <laughs> That's so Flamber Hero. Oh, God. I, don't know. I didn't know that. <laughs> Damn. Did someone figure out if stupid unit moves into another unit that makes excellent contact? No. Um, well, okay. I was about to say with certainty the answer is no. Uh, it is my belief the answer is no. If you can quote a page that makes uh, that's something I need to read, I'll, I'm willing to change my mind. But I, I have come to the conclusion that if you fail stupidity, um, you don't have to move. I will always move my maximum movement stopping at terrain or enemy units because the option is there to do that and it, it is probably their intent. But me moving my maximum distance on a fail stupidity isn't doing anything wrong, so I'm just going to do it that way. Uh, not moving, I think, you can is, is rules as written, I, but I don't think it's the intent, so I'm just never going to do it. I don't know, Flavel here is trying to make it worse for us. He's he's prepared to make an argument that forming up is not movement. Um <laughs> so, so you can have a unit existing in limbo. <laughs> but no, well the thing is I think I'm gonna go back to that page. There's a they have to use their movement. They can move up to their movement. It's like it acknowledges their models are moving, I feel. Yeah, I, I, I'm pr I, like, I'm pretty sure exactly that. But that was the early part of the stream. Um, okay, so we know we have to move in coherency. Yeah, it must endeavor to move directly as possible into contact. Yeah, so I, I think, yeah. yeah, I think there's still um, a thing for some people. I think Flamel Heroes is uh, an example of it right now. Oh, just because there's a movement phase doesn't mean anytime we're talking about movement is only the movement phase. It's like it they they move. They they, yeah, they like there's fleeing, there's yeah. movement. Like yeah. yeah, they must endeavor to move. And they move, and then if they move at a coherency on this page, um, or is it ends his move? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm confident. That I, could could I be wrong? Absolutely. And and more and more importantly, dear God, I don't know how to handle it if we don't handle it that way. <laughs> <laughs> don't make it worse, level hero, please. <laughs> well, so. Rules as written, uh, hovercraft, uh, they a unit can use the drilled before charging, if, if under maneuver. Uh, you know what? This whole thing. Don't worry about it. I'm not. <laughs> level ones are too bad. Level four is too good. I agree. I agree. Uh, I re I like magic, but um, I would like I'll, I'll say it over and over again in hopes that somebody from Games Workshop is watching and listening. And they can make it the next edition. Look how WAP did their casting and just copy that. Matthias nailed the levels. No, no, I I know you're not arguing with I know. You know, you have to point out other you have to. I need you to. <laughs> did you tell Don't me apologize to do what I need you to do? <laughs> what was that? Did you tell me he's been voluntold to be a head judge for your GT or Oh, Flamble Hero. If I could put you up, would you come be a judge at the the Scarred Hammer, whatever we're gonna call it, GT for uh, Warmer Fantasy? You'll do it, right? Any idea on Doomseeker rules? Well, I'm not supposed to show them off yet, but I don't have. What are you talking about? <laughs> what do I expect? Did, did they remember how the Doom Seekers used to work? Did they move like fanatics? It's so long ago, I don't remember. 
I hope they move like fanatics. Everybody wants you to argue Flame Wero. <laughs> I think the problem is you have infinite dispels, so level four positioning can always dispel. I don't know if that's a problem. Ooh, new Night Lord models coming out. I just looked at the War community page. Is that the kill team stuff? Yeah. I've had those for a while. I figured that's why I was letting you know you could acknowledge them now. Oh. <laughs> With the Rex. <laughs> uh the War Cry sets as well, Night Hunt versus Hyo. Or my bad, Luminous Realm Lords. <laughs> Wait, what are you what are you looking at? Uh Warhammer Communities Sunday preview. So they got War Cry, Kill Team. You said Luminous, I'm looking at those new uh, models against Still for Isles. Yeah. What are those? Um, Spear so Elves? Oh! The those are new war dancers. River Blades is what they're calling them. I am 100% buying these for war dancers. <laughs> and then, of course, Gnomes for Blood Bowl. Gnomes? Are you, are you serious? Oh, they are! Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you get him a badge. It's a badge. That's a <laughs> fox. It's a fox, sir. No, 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 no. Look at the, look <laughs> at the face. Goose. Yeah, there's goose, a badger, two foxes. <laughs> I hate Blood Bowl. I like that new tree, man, or tree thing. Yeah, the, the, the marker is great. <laughs> I think dudes would move like fanatics, but always follow the arrow on the amount. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's a rule, but you can. You can. <laughs> To yourself. No, Flame Lear, I was worried there was going to be some glaring hole in our problem that it took us way too long to solve to where we had someone in chat found the page for us. I love War Dancers Tall Cash. I love them. Yeah, I protect them, but they do they do the job. They, they do a fantastic job. Oh, the giant tree. Oh, I think I found a treatment agent you'd be willing to run it in Old World. Uh well, flammable hero. Uh, if you are, if you are, if you would legit, legitimately consider being a part of it, I will discuss that with you and we'll make the date together. Because um, I, 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 I'm so out of the competitive scene that I can't do it without Scary. Uh, that's very much his wheelhouse. So we'll do it together. Our two channels will do it together. Uh, we're aiming for summer or fall. But if you are interested, my dude, we will definitely talk. We have not picked a date yet, and we can pick one that works for you. Did, did they have impact that hit before impact? I don't remember. I've never had Doomseeker models. I thought I recall I ever have it anyway. I'm stoked to get some. Carl, are you are you enjoying Kill Team? If we wanna if we wanna stray off of Warhammer the old world for a second, um I'm finding tenth edition boring. I can't record it. I haven't enjoyed watching it nearly as much as previous editions. Why do you think that is? I I think it might be that we would the uh, their universal rules attitude. You got universal armies as well, where like everyone just kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. And never really, you know, it's 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 points hammer. No one's like just there to brawl. It's you know if you don't understand all the objectives, and that's what you like about it. There's not really nothing for you to do. Um. As it's points hammer. Check yeah, this I, out. I've seen. Do we need? No, no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rephrase this. To be less. Is power creep a good thing for excitement? Because, uh, like, I feel the power sleep. I think it's, it's boring. It's boring. I just don't care. Yeah. I I like I like. Hey, new books out. Here's the most powerful combo. This is busted. Let's do a battle rap. Oh wow, that's crazy. Let's never do that again. Two months later, it gets FAQ'd. I actually think, in hindsight, because the grass is always greener, and I'm a war gamer, so I'm always going to dislike the way things currently are. Uh, maybe it was better. Maybe it was better 
when things came out busted overpowered for a month or two and then got toned down in line with everything else. Well, I think Power Creep is really only good if it comes with new units. Like, you know, Power power Creep shouldn't be in the form of rules unless you're doing well, an addition I'm, overhaul. And like, you're, you know, you're starting from the ground up. I'm okay with there. rules that are, like, a, a unit that gets, never gets used. Like, I would yeah. I would have loved to have seen some crazy new rules for Reavers. Uh, you know, uh, like a busted detachment that makes them good. Right? Yeah, like, just make them play. Like, Reavers are still utter trash. Give, give me a reason to buy them. Ken feels like I lost a lot of the fluff. I thoroughly agree. Yeah. Again, because it's just... I understand wanting to make the game simpler with universal rules, and I, I get that. But it's it's also had some drawbacks. Like, I know... I've, I haven't spoken to anyone that's hyped about Sisters of Battle. They're all, uh, it's the same complaint every time. Because they made Melta's universal with, with stat line. They made it suck for the army that's built around Melta. Mm-hmm. Because they need like a five to wound with Lehman Rush or something. But <laughs> they're, they're doing fine in the competitive meta. That's which is good. But again, that's that's points hammer. You know, you, yep. know, you, got, you can. They yep. they field a lot of models that are very mobile. Yep. So they can they can play that fairly well. Yeah, I I I'm realizing that I don't necessarily like the game. I like the narrative of the game, and I never knew that. Yeah. There's just no narrative. The last few games I've watched and bat reps I've watched as well. The team that is getting their ass handed to them the most in as far as like the from a war game perspective usually ends up winning because they're they're play, they're just doing points. And that, that's always you know when it's like a really clutch last minute thing that's that's neat. But when you're like yeah you've you've tabled half my army but I've got triple the points, you know like you uh, yeah, I, it just it just very much we're we're bleeding viewers. We're, we're winding down, guys. We're just gonna talk about forty k a little bit, and then we'll end it. But um, it just feels like forty k. I don't care about the models anymore. I can just throw tokens on the table. This token, yeah. this token moves six and scores point. This token moves six and rolls a last cannon shot. The points are also weird because I feel I feel Space Marines. If you're not running Dreadnoughts, you're a Horde army now. Yeah. Because you, you can field so many of them in a 2,000-point game. Well, I, I painted, um, I think, seven or eight, that, no, maybe nine or 10,000 points of Ultramarines for 10th edition. And I have a full Dreadnought list. I have a full Gravis list. I have a full Terminator list. Um, yeah. And I just, I I can't. I just can't. I've, I've been sitting, and I, I just got that magnetized Beyblade for my guard. All I have to do is paint up three Kyberes and some infantry, and I got like 3,000 points good to go whenever I want. But I've had so little interest in 40k that I've been toying off with just cashing that in and seeing where I can put that money elsewhere. <laughs> because it just hasn't been interesting me at all. Yeah, For me, toll cash, the, the uh, leagues of Otan were a big problem because I, I had a 2,700 point army in 9th edition. That oh, yeah, when when <laughs> when tenth edition dropped, it became a nineteen hundred and fifty point army. So I can play a two thousand point bat rep with my whole collection. And then, and then FAQ uh, came <laughs> out, and I can't even make a fifteen hundred point list anymore. I'm like, if that's how we're gonna fix things by dropping points over and over and over again, I am I I can't believe how many malls are on the table. Sorry, let me rephrase that. I can't believe how many scoring tokens are on the table these days. Yeah, I just lost all interest. I, I think I think um, when it's not impossible, or it's not not necessarily it, it it wouldn't be rare, so not uncommon, for there to be more miniatures on a table for forty k than some armies in old world. There's a problem. I'm not talking to you. It's sometimes models. Do you think if Warhammer Fantasy Ninth Edition came out, I don't I don't actually I don't know how to word what I want to ask. Um, Eighth was not doing great. Would we would we care as much as for the old world as well as I'm assuming most people here love it, but I love it. But would I have loved it as much if it came right off the back of Eighth Edition? What I'm trying to say is, does 40k need a reset and a and a heavy model reduction 
which you kind of so my theory right now and i don't i my theory now is we're going through a reset where they're stealing everything back cutting out a bunch of old models and then in 11th edition we're gonna start to see power creep again i i wouldn't i actually wouldn't be too upset about that because they're ha- yeah. they have to play very carefully with what they do because it is so easy if you if you change too much too if you, too fast you got too many the you, know, you got too many people with way too much money invested in the game they'll just drop out because you, you can't make someone's collection invalid at least not suddenly <laughs> so um I have a small channel we all know this um wait saying that at me the worst part is 40k is all time high popular so I don't think we'll ever get Warner back in 40k form well yeah. So, call it, like, think about what I'm about to say. Maybe this has some sort of correlation. So, I have a small channel, but I've played all the games on it. I work for Mini Wargaming, played all the games. And there's a thing that um, I know this from community, community, community. Uh, if you play 40K, there's a list, there's a way you pretty much have to make your list. There's a few ways of doing it, but this is how you make your list. And you're going to get people pointing out your list isn't correct. Like you should have brought this instead of this, this instead of this, this is the same job, but better. It's but chess. It, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Sigmar has that to the extreme. If you, if you buy from like the list and slightly, you're going to get like just a bunch of comments. Like, no, oh, that's not how you make a list. It's like, you have to have one of these. You can't ever bring two of those. It's like, like, it's just like, it's like old, the old war machine community. It's like, this is what you bring. This is what you bring. Which, speaking of, they're back. They're not no longer old War Machine communities. It's the War Machine. Are they back? They're back. They had a they had a decent showing at Epica. Oh, good. No, I'm happy. No, if that's your game, I, I want you to have like I want everybody to have their game. But Warhammer Fantasy. Now, granted, there are different pockets of communities out there, and I know where mine is. But you can bring whatever you want and be like, we're doing it. Th- we can bring an all night goblin game. Like we're doing a theme here. We don't like war machines are good for orcs and goblins, but nobody complains if we don't bring enough war machines. Um, like if we'll do a Bretonia list with no knights, and people are like, cool, it's a thing. Uh, nobody's telling you you have to. Now, I do expect, um, when the tournaments are happening on the regular, we're starting to, we'll start to see more of that creep into this community. But I don't know, I don't want to just keep blaming the competitive community for all these problems because Warhammer Fantasy and the decades past was a very competitive game, and I still loved it. So, is 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 my is fourth edition Sigmar is gonna make or break me? Like if if if, if they they gotta nail it. Um, I I'm already done with tenth edition forty k. I don't I, I don't think there's anything they can do to improve it right now. I'm a the Dark Angel Marcus. thing was just too much for me. Like this is nothing. This is yeah. I'll, I'll play my Ultramarines. <laughs> I'm I'm of two minds. Either fourth edition Sigmar is gonna be the beta, like the play test of what they want eleventh edition to be, or it's gonna become forty K tenth edition. The the right on the wall there for it's gonna be either or is like they already came out with Spearhead, you know, we've already got our combat patrol equivalent, they're lining them up more and more as now, they go. So well we we've seen forty K Sigmar do that for the past few years anyway, but yeah. Uh, Combat Patrol was an awesome idea, but it just didn't work. Nobody, it, it wasn't, it didn't do anything. Uh, nobody yeah. wanted to learn two sets of rules for the one box of models. Yeah, nobody, it, was, it was easier when it was just, I understand from a wanting to put value in the box standpoint, but it was easier to make it marketable when it was, hey, it's 500 points, go play a 500 point game of Warhammer. Well, so I thought the, I thought the idea was really good. And a lot, a lot of YouTube channels thought the idea was really good. Every YouTube channel announced that they're going to have their weekly combat patrol battle reports. Turns out nobody wanted to play it and nobody wanted to watch it because it wasn't the real rules. And then are we? Oh, are they? They? Are they better not be copying the same format for what's it called? Spearhead. They can't Spearhead because they already proved. Still. They've already proved nobody. Want, no, nobody actually wanted. It was a cool idea. Just didn't work right because you don't want to learn. You don't want to learn my orc boy unit. Uh, for this game and this, I have different rules, uh, different uh, strategies I can use. Well, the strategy report's not that big a deal, but you don't want a different stat line for the same unit for the game yeah. is basically the same. Let's see, I'm reading to see if they have anything that hints at the rules. 
AOS in a great spot to turn results from different armies, top eight weekly. I'm highly optimistic about fourth. Yeah. Um I, I I was really no, I was really enjoying Sigmar. I I I, I cut it for the channel because it's a Warhammer Fantasy channel. But I no, I was I was enjoying it. I know it's not for everybody, but I was having a, a great time with it. But I was a little um, exasperated with the community being like, "Oh, you're not. Like, that's not how you make a season Sigmar list. That's not how you make a well. Like, well, that's not how you make a like. I want to be able to do whatever you want. And the more a game is tournament ish or considered a tournament game, the more people will say like, "This is the way you have to do it. Like, there's the way you. I don't, how do, I don't know how to say this. I'm just not good with my words. I don't like a community." Um, position being there's only one way to play your army and it changes with the you know the next update i'm enjoying the old world right now because i can play any of my armies any which way i want to and right now the community is all for it or he needs a hard split into competitive mode and smaller roster i think and and then i you're, i could be wrong and i have no business having an opinion here i think games workshop should have nothing to do with the competitive scene uh they should just make their their game and let somebody else make the competitive rule set okay so actually it looks like it'll not be a rip of combat control I, this oh, article good. came out on the 28th um so for age of super fourth edition they're including spirit in it they're going for a modular systems what they're calling it so What's for, that mean? for spearhead all you need is the core rules so the core rule book good to go because your list is built for you all that kind of, you know, no it sounds like it's just gonna be a kill each other game not really an objectives okay. they have a the categories they have it divided into for modulars core rules which which includes moving fighting shooting unit coherency and objectives then they have commands in the advanced rules terrain magic army comp command models and battle tactics you use everything but battle tactics for path to glory and then they add that for match to play and you know their seasonal handbook stuff so you know i have i have um i have yeah. players i play with you regularly that they're at home. they don't they don't even use uh battle tactics and stuff when they play sigmar well, wait, so I, I do a battle report i gotta use battle tactics that's what the audience yeah. wants maybe i'm wrong about that So I mean, if they just if it's out the box, here's the core rules. Go play. Then then I think it'll be fine. Because again, it's just it'll be like um, the original Triad Combat Patrol, where it's like here's 500 points. Go play. That could be fun. I hope I hope it's executed better than Combat Patrol was. Yeah. I mean, I'll say that it looks like they're. If nothing else, you're getting a deal. Mm. on what you're getting because the stormcast one looks pretty soft <laughs> you got unit a full unit 10 vanquishers night vexler a unit of annihilators then you got indrasta and a chariot for who or stormcast oh indrasta yeah i was thinking yeah the city the city sigma one yeah, I had just a bunch of malls just sitting around that never get. Well, to be fair, even my forty k malls aren't getting used lately. But no, I just uh, I like I like the collecting and the painting and that. I mean, that's what the I playing think. hasn't I, been as fun. I I make lists before I buy anything, but that's just because I go like, hey, here's a fun thing I want for like I haven't painted them yet, but I've got all the miniatures for a all cab bone reapers list because I think. Fast that's cool. Dead sounds fun. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> you think the Bone Reaper calf could fit on? No, they're too big. On oh, trade, uh, uh, two two the, king calf still stays on a twenty five by fifty. I don't think that the leader could. I, I think I've got some. Um, no, they're they're on the old base. I'm seeing the new ones, but I think they might. They don't have bows, which I think. Well, then you you're bringing spears if you're bringing two king cav. So. Well, no, I like the bows. I figured you just you would bring archers because they're just dirt cheap on foot. No, uh, the bows because reserve move and skirmish. 
Oh, oh, Skirm, yeah, that'd be. <laughs> Obviously, everybody has to paint. <laughs> but uh, no bows. But I think they, I think they'd fit. They're how do blood knights fit? Because they're blood knight size, ish, maybe a little smaller, a little narrower. <laughs> yeah, Tyler. Oh, the problem. It's not even a problem. It's like that's the only place games rush up and get their data, though, right? Um, they can only get data from big events like that. And it's going to be tournament. Like it's it's it's. It's, it's nobody's fault. We're not going to blame the tournament community. Um, in fact, we can thank the tournament community uh, for making Games Workshop so much money so that there was enough money to make our game the old world. Like, they have to make money. They have to, they have to get their data from somewhere. They, they, they can't cater to the casual. There's no data from the casual. They can't call up every local gaming store and be like, how many games of 40K are played in your store today? Who's playing what? Are we seeing too many uh, tyrannies on the table these days? Yeah. Like you have to get tournament data. It's the only place they get data. I mean, you can't you can't even look at narrative events because people go to narrative events like I, they go they go into the same mentality of I gotta win. Well, there is yeah. one more thing they could have done, but they I think they already botched it. They could have put out their app for free with all the unit rules for free and an army builder for free, and now they have an infinite way of mining data so, yeah, about games people are using for free. Games Workshop. But no, you want to monetize it and get more Warhammer TV sales. Yeah, I and now we know. have to listen to Turk. I don't know why they why they don't do that. Like, as as I, I'm I'm not I'm a very I'm not smart guys. Card games have been doing that for <laughs> years. They have all these yeah they always have a way to play it online if and I, they harvest that data all day. <laughs> I know if, if I can see that I can't see somebody somebody over there. I uh, saw that, and somebody higher than them kiboshed it. Like, somebody over there pointed out, like, hey, we can get data elsewhere by having this app. <laughs> Winning is for losers? Yeah, well, yay, man, wins are forever, Dan Brooks. Friends are temporary. <laughs> is a tight rule set better for casual games? Uh, No, but, like, oh, well, that, that's a whole separate conversation. But we're probably in agreement already. <laughs> a song of Washington Fire states that the best data I've seen from Instagram is, is I will never I will never buy another uh two minute and I've miniature. They've canceled too many games that I love. They've they've permanently lost me as a customer and that's meaningless to them. I'm nothing else, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Ice and Fire is pretty big at one of the local stores. That's like one of the more prominent I... miniatures games played. And let me say this. I have never seen a single painted Song of Ice and Fire miniature. That's, so that's that, my stance on the game. That's <laughs> my I hate that. I think the malls are actually not awesome. I think they look good. I've never seen a single one painted. <laughs> I think the game well, I only played the first edition. I think the game is actually really good, but I won't be burned again by that company. I've, I'm starting to try out skirmish games just to, you know, things I have time to play. And I've oh. decided to paint up Malifaux that look, because using cards instead of dice sounds fun. On on yeah, fair. I'll put on that whole thing when we do the GT for the Mount Minish, whatever we call it. Um, uh, it will require painted armies, folks. I can't you believe some of you go to tournaments that don't require painted. Are you going to send out army restrictions like beforehand? Like, hey, you could do like rule three and stuff like that. Let people I, know. I won't. I don't think there'll be any need for rule three, but there might be a discussion. Uh, whoever the judges are, uh, we'll sit, we'll have a meeting on Zoom or something and figure it out. What it, point cost are you looking at? Probably 2,000 points. I would so like to go have, less. Are you going to have a no dragons rule? For your Ooh. earlier statement of you don't really think you should bring a dragon. <laughs> I think if you want the most can, diverse lineup, I think no dragons is a good rule to have. Can I tell you, I, I want to implement that rule, but I don't think the community does. And I don't want to be the arbiter of you know, what's fun. <laughs> I, you, how about this? You get 10 extra points. If you, like, you're like victory points if you don't bring a dragon. 
Oh, like an actual <laughs> make 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 it the competitive. <laughs> you like do the war everything where you get points for it being painted, points for this. You get extra points if you didn't bring a drink. <laughs> Oh, and Dark Ages is like one of my all-time favorite games. It is such a good game. Uh, the writing, oh, the the writing was a oh, good game. Rule of Pi, Sasha. Rule of Pi. Rule of Pi. I love Pi. Um, Adepticon had three unpainted armies. Wow, I wouldn't have allowed them in. That's the door. Go through it. Go into the store. Buy some paints. Don't buy monument paints. Good as that or models, whatever it is. That line was ridiculous. Look at guys. If if you wanna if you wanna paint an army, you can buy three rattle cans and make it look good, and just make them all ghosts. Good enough for me. Put paint this. on them. <laughs> play a uh, play chaos space marines. Get the get the ravage star box. Prime it. Dry brush it. Done because like those dry brush so well from everything I've seen. <laughs> Actually, or yeah. Do with, or do with nids, or you know, whatever you want. Like, Scott, you're going to the, the the Warhammer World tournament is 1500 points, and they're allowing dragons. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to be worried about that FAQ. <laughs> I have nothing to say anymore on this topic. Must they be in the proper size bases for the um? No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna put this out there. Well, I mean, okay, I'll I'm gonna talk to the, the the everybody and see what we're gonna do about that. But my opinion is, I was never planning on rebasing my armies up to the proper size bases, other than like maybe monsters and skirmishers or something like that. Uh, I was gonna use the expanded conversion traits. Um. The only reason why I did rebase is because when I got invited to the old world uh, to do the thing, they said, hey, the only thing we want is, like, you got to on the proper size bases. So I rebased four of my armies to go there, and because I did four, I did the other 12. But yeah, no, I, I'm not, I'm not, I think the conversion trays are fine. Uh, I think just print or buy, if you have skirmishers or monsters, lone characters, put the conversion tray underneath the, lone, the, the character or monster that you need. But no dragons, only wyverns. I can't make a wyvern work. I love them, though. <laughs> I think we've talked it all to death. I have to edit for tomorrow because I haven't edited yet. Oh, dear. Uh, I have editors for this, but I said I wanted to edit the first batch. And then just give that to the editors well, so I, they can see like, I, I, this what I want. <laughs> I'd never want to, I'm going to air quote employees because everybody I have is contractors, but I don't ever want to ask anybody to do anything that I don't fully understand. So I want to know exactly what's going to be required to edit these um, live streams. Yeah. So I have to do the first batch. But now I have to do it. And I got, I got um, spoiled by having two editors. <laughs> I want to thank all you green names and all the super chats today for taking your well, you're paying for the editors and, <laughs> and all the models for, for finding one page 184. For yes, me. Christopher for finding page 184. Oh, uh, you guys are the best community. Even Nemo, Sasha, and Tolkash. Kyle, I'm on the fence with you. The rest of you are pretty awesome. See you guys. Uh... Oh, actually, no, never mind. I can't say that yet. See you guys Wednesday. <laughs> happy, happy Wargaming. Do I have an end screen? No. There's not one on the stream yet, but we won't know for <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs>